Boom. We started soon. Right. Start this off, man. Everything looks to be stable and steady. Um, and I want to say thank you to Peter Howgardy following the Twitch channel and James20645 for following the Twitch channel and Info Version 2 for following twice. So thanks uh, twice. Right, let's have a look here. Start this mother off. Boom! Hello everyone, welcome. Oh my gosh, my voice just went. What happened then? What the? <clears throat> Honestly, I was, you can't write that stuff. Like literally, voice fine, go live, and then it, it croaks out. Been straining it today, so anyway. Today, uh, we're doing a flight. It's the world tour. It's the final flight of the Grand Caravan. We're going to be flying this baby from uh, San Francisco, where we landed, after we flew under the Golden Gate Bridge. And I sent that off to t t Sim Beasts, or Sim Best, sorry. And I'll tell you, it wasn't good enough. It wasn't the best of that week, evidently. <laughs> like, unbelievable. Um, nor was landing on the bridge, which is another thing we did as well. So uh, then we landed it at San Francisco Airport, and that's where the plane is sitting right this second. Um, it's about 2.30 in the morning, I think, in uh, San Francisco, and we're going to take off from San Francisco, and we're going to fly all the way down here to Santa Barbara. And um, Santa Barbara is uh, a default airport. It's nighttime, so it don't really make a difference, but... I did want to showcase like an airport. It's still nighttime, so it might make a difference. But we're gonna also we're gonna land at Santa Barbara. 
Now, we've got the Fokker 50 waiting for us at Santa Barbara Airport. So we can leave the Grand Caravan. We can get into an actual, like, airline plane, the Fokker 50, which can carry, like, 60 people on board, I think. Right, you know, at the moment, we, our plane can only carry eight. You know, we're, we're leaving people behind. But now we're going to get into the Fokker 50, and we're going to do a short hop to Santa Monica Airport, um, where that's where the stream will end um so we'll get a short flight in that and then to, you know next week we're going to take off and join the red line and go all the way to the grand canyon um but that's going to be early hour in the morning that's going to be like taking off at four and landing at like six or seven whereas today we're taking off at about three in the morning and we're not going to be arriving into uh santa barbara until about four 4 35 o'clock i think in the morning so still gonna see those lights you know of california glistening so matt i haven't got a clue where anybody is usually i've got a few people you know waiting and stuff like that but it doesn't seem like anybody's out which is a shame because today is like tech wednesday q a you can ask questions in fact in my discord i've created a server uh, sorry a channel devoted to questions so if anybody wants to ask a question during you know on wednesday or anytime really if you pop it in the discord um i will then read from that list of questions first and then get to anybody who answer who asks a question in the chat i've started myself off with why the hell are you doing this right so i'll answer that later <laughs> like um and another thing i've had loads of questions people have um messaged me or e in a conversation and facebook chat have sort of said like you know how do you stream or the people have been having issues with their youtube channel or the twitch channel and uh the, the new to streaming and i don't know it's like a lot of people want to know my setup for some reason i don't know why um but i thought well let's do it let's like address everybody because i've never really done a video about here's my setup for streaming i've never done that um so i figured well we'll do it in the cruise phase of flight you know, from San Francisco to Santa Barbara. Um, I will quickly go over, real quick though, um, my initial setup and then go into the details of it during the cruise flight. So check it out then. And if you're coming in, say hi. You know. Well, say something, man. <laughs> anyway, um, we'll just carry on uh right so i mean this is this will be available afterwards after the live stream so people can you know uh watch it afterwards as well as all my videos are right so uh how how to stream now well it's a little bit of a tricky question because you know there's different types of streaming and i'm not talking about youtube or twitch that's just two different platforms to stream on you're right uh hornetville mate um but you know there's different types of streaming so you've got flight simulation streaming you've got gaming streaming you've got streaming like people doing slime or you know just so many different topics that you can do a stream on okay and i think first identifying what kind of streamer you want to be first is your very first point of call um and, and we're going to aim it more at flight simulation streaming more than anything else um but we will touch on gaming as well because but they are two totally different things you know if you've got a pc that's built for flight simulation that pc and that monitor is not built for gaming it may run the games but it ain't built for gaming and if vice versa if you've got a, a pc build for gaming it's going to be very tricky to run it for flight simulation you know most streamers that you see out there that do flight simulation and gaming on the same channel most likely either uh, have two computers one for flight simulation and one for gaming or they're pre-configuring between the streams um of their pc you know tuning it for gaming or tuning it for streaming uh, for flight simming or they're having loads of problems with like laggy frames in flight simulation or stutters or in the gaming you know lag uh or whatever and they're just like i don't know i don't know how to resolve this you know but um gaming streaming and flight simulation streaming are two totally different things and we're going to be talking mainly about flight simulation streaming so my personal setup um and this is just what works for me the very first thing i would say is you've got to do what's 
works for you we gotta you know find out what works for you and you stick with that because to be honest there is no one set answer for how do you stream to twitch or youtube there is no one definitive and anybody who says oh i've got the definitive answer out there this is how you do it well there isn't because so many different pcs are involved you know everyone's got a different setup in their pc uh, people's space is completely different. You know, I've got like this here to stream with. Um, somebody might have a whole basement, you know, ready. Uh, people's time, people's budget. It's just so many different factors that you've got to take into account that there is no one definitive answer on how to stream to Twitch or YouTube. Um, you know, this, but I, what I'm going to go through is how I stream to Twitch and YouTube, you know. Um, so for me it's two pcs you know um back in the day when i was doing fsx i had i had this i5 desktop pc with a gt 720 graphics card it was okay i think it had like 16 gig of ram or 8 gig of ram and it and it did do fsx uh, with a load of add-ons quite successfully you know um then you know uh i had the opportunity to where i could actually you know buy a a pre-built PC, but with specs that I were like, yeah, I want that in my, you know, PC. It's like your dream PC, you know? Um, so about three years ago, I think it was, um, I bought the the flight simulation PC I've got now, which is from Chill Blast, a very good company. It's the Nimbus 3, I think it is. It was designed and all the parts were decided by Matt Davies. Um, they put it together and I use it and I'm so glad he put those parts and decided on them in there. The graphics card, the 1080 Ti, I'm so glad I've got that over say like the 2080 because you know, 11 gig of video memory is a lot better than eight, you know, for version five at least. Um, it ran P3D version four like a dream and it runs P3D version five very successfully. So I won't be needing to upgrade for at least another year or two. Um, and this was three years ago, this PC, you know? Um, so the designs of it must be at least four years old. But um, I got that PC. So my my flight simulation PC for FSX became a second PC that I used when I started to stream. And I think I started streaming in like 2018, um, but just very on and offy, you know? Um, and I do feel two PCs, if you wanna be a streamer for either Twitch or YouTube, you definitely need two PCs, you know? You need one that's dedicated to flight simulation and configured for flight simulation with the Windows operating system. And then one that handles the stream and all everything else, um, which doesn't have to be the same type of PC as your flight sim, because that would be overkill. Uh, the PC that I've got, literally, it's like, what, 150, 160 quid it cost. Um, it is literally a basic desktop like my old one. In fact, it's got the old graphics card in there. It's got an i5 core, um, eight gig of memory. I mean, it runs the stream and that's what it needs to do, you know? So during the cruise flight, I want to get into the exact like settings, uh, which software I use, how I stream, all the details. But for now, it's like I've got uh, my main monitor here in front of me for the flight sim. I've got a secondary monitor here for the chat. And then on my other PC, I've got a, its own monitor, obviously, to use. So I've got three monitors, I've got two PCs, and all my peripherals, and a mic and camera. And initially, your camera, your mic, doesn't have to be anything massively flash. You know, we're... I'm streaming in, what, 1080p, so it doesn't have to be, like, mega, the camera. In fact, you can use your mobile as a camera. You can use a tablet as a camera. A GoPro can be a, a webcam. You know, it, it, even a photography camera you can hook up and use um, as a webcam. So, so many different options, you know. Um, but, you know, find what works for you and use that one. Um, in fact, the microphone as well, man. Hey, from Russia! Whoa! Man, the angry Russian simmer. Hey, calm down, man. Calm down. Greetings from Russia, man. Hey, how's it going over in Russia? Holy moly. <clears throat> Didn't realize my voice was that loud. Sorry, I'll have to uh, quiet down a bit. I'm waking up Russia here and they're angry. Um, so, yeah, your microphone, by the way, um, I was watching uh, a, uh, a streamer the other day who was saying that the microphone is probably the most important part of a streamer setup you know um it's it's actually it's 100 of a stream whereas the video is like 50 percent 
uh, what you actually stream is like the other 50%, but the sound covers everything. And so if anything, you know, um, you want to, you know, put all your money into your microphone because there's nothing worse than having this, you know, really nice picture image and this tinny little scabby microphone. Um, it's better to have a really good microphone and a rubbish video than the opposite way around. Um, in fact, he even said like, you know, that old question of, you know, what would you rather lose, your hearing or your sight? Many people would probably choose, oh, I'd rather lose my hearing or something. I'd rather keep my vision, you know? Um, but uh, the microphone, the, the audio is so important. Um, so it's like, spend your money on that, he said. But you don't have to spend hundreds of pounds. Like, you don't have to buy a 300 quid microphone because after like 100 pounds, they all kind of sound a little similar, like in terms on Twitch, because we can only stream in so much audio quality anyway. So there is no point in getting this mega massive quality microphone because it ain't gonna come out the other side to the viewer the same, you know? Um, it may be capturing great, you know, crystal clear audio fidelity, but what they're hearing will be different. So it's like, you don't have to spend hundreds. In fact, he said, once you've spent like a hundred quid, that's probably about it. Uh, your choice is the USB headset by Sennheiser. Good, good man. Uh, my headset, sixteen ninety nine. Uh, got it from CX. <laughs> uh, I'm a big fan of your post on Facebook, man. I just gonna have to narrow that one down a little bit more. I've done hundreds of posts, thousands. <laughs> like, right. So uh, that's basically my basic setup for streaming, and it's the same on Twitch. It's the same on YouTube. There are slightly different behaviors for twitch and youtube but we'll get into that and during the flight so let's get into the flight shall we um instead of me gobbing and gassing so let me see here i've all got everything set good 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 no worries right okay so Basically, we're picking it up again, San Francisco, and we're flying down to Santa Barbara, where we're picking up a Fokker 50 and flying that to Santa Monica. And that's where we're going to end it. So uh, I'm going to get rid of this for now. If I, oh, actually, before I do, let me bring up our uh, flight plan. So this is this is more specifically it. Let me get rid of that. Uh, this is basically what it is. And also in the flight, by the way, I'm gonna I want to go through the most important thing to any streamer, like anybody who wants to stream on YouTube or Twitch. The most important thing you must pay attention to if you're doing flight simulation, um, because it will make or break uh, your stream and your sim, basically. But again, we'll do that in the um, the flight phase. And actually, there is another final subject I want to touch on just before we land, which I only found out, which I think Hornetville knows more about, because I actually now that you just reminded me, actually, that you pointed it out to me when I was purchasing P3D version 5. In fact, one of my, one of my people who was in the chat, you mentioned this website, and I hadn't heard of it. But anyway, I have since heard of it now. Somebody who uh, who I know uh actually mentioned it as well and told me what it was about and i'm like you serious man <laughs> i was like y you're kidding me right and i was i couldn't believe it so anyway i'll get through i want to speak something about that as well um but that's that's honestly I, that's mega i cannot believe what i was told but anyway that that'll just before we land <sighs> falcon 50 by mark is very good but learjet is one so angry russian mate let me just get you right danny i can see you there um let me get you up to speed a little bit so um i've been doing a virtual pilot's career um on on the on this channel and you know i started off with uh flight school you know learning to fly and i achieved my private pilot's license and then I went on to do my instrument rating license, you know, and just recently I have achieved uh, the cargo license, which means I can fly multi-engine airplanes. Um, I'm in the process right now of trying to earn my commercial pilot's license, which unfortunately I haven't yet, not yet passed. Um, I've still got to satisfy 
two more conditions for that license. But when I do, it means we can actually get into jets. We can get into Airbus, Boeing, uh, the jets basically. But at the moment, I can only fly twin propeller or four engine propeller planes or a single engine, of course. Um, and that's kind of what we're sticking to with the world tour. I fly what I can according to the virtual pilot life that I've done. So that's basically why I've chosen the Fokker 50 as opposed over like say, I think the, the, the Learjet is a jet obviously, but I think isn't the Falcon 50 a jet as well? I'm, I'm not sure about that, but yeah, I can't fly jets yet. So, um, also, we've got to see the Golden Gate Bridge today, guys. We've got to see the Golden Gate Bridge. So I have, let me just uh, quickly create the flight here with Project Fly. So we're taking off from San Francisco International and we're going to Santa Barbara Municipal. And we are in the, where is it? Here it is, we're in the Grand Caravan, and it's a private charter, and this is the World Tour Leg 3. So we'll be taking off, well, don't matter about that, IFR we're doing, it's late at night, so definitely IFR, because we can't see shit. Um, and let me just pop in the flight plan, which I have already saved somewhere down here, there it is. Right, that's that. That's ready to fly. But I'm also going to book in now as well the next leg, which is Santa Barbara to Santa Monica real quick in the Fokker 50. Because that's basically, we've, we've flown from, you definitely need to enlarge chat window. Or do you reckon it's a little bit small, do you, mate? You want me to make it a little bit bigger, yeah? Thing is, though, it can't stick out too much, you see, because... Uh, I don't want it, uh, you know, it's, it's, yeah. I don't want it to be taken over, do you know what I mean? How's that, mate? I mean, to be honest, no, no matter where you are, you should be able to see that chat, but is that a little bit better? Let me have a look. Yeah, you can see that, that's fine. That's, 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 you can read that, that's fine. Thank you, uh, angry Russian, mate. There we go. Right. What was I saying? Yeah, so uh, we're getting into the Fokker 50 um, in Santa Barbara. Basically, we've come from Canada, and we're going around the world in a world tour. Um, flight number is uh, world tour, and we'll call this B03, because it's leg three. Um, that's the aircraft. Da, 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 done. And we'll just import that because I've already created the flight plan for that as well. There we go. And that's where we'll end it as well today. So that's that. Um, and it's the, the Aer Lingus as well, by the way. Sim Market staff is here. Okay. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome, Sim Market staff. Uh, is my connection working? Can you read this text? Yes, Danny, I can read your text. Thank you very much. Right, so we'll click fly now on that. That's all set up. Let's, uh, where's the airplane gone, man? How come I can't hear anything either? You got my mail. Mate, I don't know what you're talking about, man. I got your mail. I mean, you sent me an email. Is that what you're trying to say, mate? Let me have a look at my emails. Um, I'm going to say nil pois on that one, mate. Um, I've got no email from, um, Sim Market. I got no email from an angry Russian. So I want to say Nilpois. Sorry, mate. Don't know what you're on about. Anyway, your email address now you're saying, I, you haven't sent me your email address. I don't have your email address. So... I mean, to be honest, I don't know really what you're talking about. Anyway, the uh, there's the airplane, by the way, guys. Uh, it's a little bit dark, so that's why we can't see. So we better get in, man, before the sun comes up, because I want to actually see the uh, stars and stuff. So let's get into the plane, shall we? And we need to turn on our flashlight. 
because uh, I can't see anything, man. So let's... Uh, oh, actually, before we do, hadn't we better... Uh, oh, no, she's fully fueled, actually. She's fully fueled. She's fine. Right. Uh, let's start this baby up, shall we? Turn the uh, battery on. And uh, standby power can go on. There we go. And uh, generator. And let's have the uh, first load of avionics to come on. Oh, even well, we get both of them coming on. There we go. So turn that on. Uh, oh, yeah. Hey, did the lights come on just then out there? It was pitch black before. Do they just flick on? Let's get on. Seems your chat cut links. Okay, I'll contact you later by Facebook and we will talk. Uh, okay, okay, mate, if you want. Seems your chat cut links. I don't know what it's... Again, mate, I don't know what you're talking, mate. I, I really don't know what you're on about. I mean, if you're looking for attention or something, well done, but I don't know what you're talking. Seems your chat cut links. Ah, you're trying to drop a link in my chat. Um, well, actually, uh, that's YouTube stopping that, mate. So, um, I don't know why you're trying to drop a link unless you're uh, trying to spam me something, in which case YouTube will say, no, thank you. Right, so uh, let's get some power to this uh, bad boy, shall we? Get the fuel flowing. I'm not actually hearing much. I just realized the sound's muted. That's why. <laughs> Forgot about that, man. Right, so uh, let's uh, let's get the engine, shall we? Go in, pour that baby up, get this sucker going. We need to turn on some of this stuff now. Um, actually, we never even asked for an ATC. This is, by the way, the final time we're going to use uh, the a the ATC within the sim itself. This will be the first final time. I haven't even asked for clearance, man. That's a rubbish pilot, straight away. Right, well, I got that, mate. Daisy. Start the motor again. Oops. Right. Uh, contact the ground. Um, we're ready to taxi this puppy off, I think. Uh, flaps. Guys, this is the last time we will have to uh, fly this puppy. I'm going to actually miss this one. Um, fuel boost is on. I thought I turned it off. There we go. Now it's off. Standby power is still on. Uh, well, I turned it off. Oh, yeah. Hey. Get out of here. Standby power is on. There we go. Got all that done. Right, let's have some taxi requests today, shall we? So yeah, guys, when we get into the cruise, if you've got any questions about version 5, if you're having trouble with your sim, you know, if you go in my Discord and drop the question down in the questions channel, I will start to read from that place first and then get to anybody else. And also, um, I'm going to go through the most important thing for any flight simmer or streamer, the most important thing, and also go through the details of what software you need to stream and how to set it up properly. 
and uh, I just, I've just got, I've had a lot of questions about that, so I figured this is the best time to do it. So we're going to runway one, right? Um, hang on a sec. Where am I? Where am I heading? Heading one. Oh, look at me, I hate that. Yeah, gotcha. One left. Runway ten or one zero. Sorry. Um, right, so let's, uh, it's this go, shall we, man? Let's, uh, we'll, we'll just quickly have a turn around and then I'll get GSX to, uh, take me to the, uh, leader. Because I got a clue where we're going. And here we are. Whoa, hey, whoa, hey, hey, hey. Right, I think, can we get GSX off now? There we go. Runway one left it was, yes. Please take me there. Let's just uh, wait for its uh, follow me car. Because I don't know where I'm going. It's San Francisco, man. I'm from Britain. Ain't got a clue. So. How's everybody doing anyway? Is everybody okay? Where's this? Uh, one minute and two seconds before the dude gets to us, eh? What's that all about? So the first phase of this flight here is very simple. Um, I mean, to be honest, we're going to be using the GPS for navigation, so I'm not going to have to worry about VORs and and dialing them in. Um, we're literally going to go by uh, this GPS system. But in the Fokker 50, unfortunately, there is no GPS system, so we've got to do VOR navigation. Um, now I've already set up, actually no I haven't, when this flight ends I'll set up the flight plan. I mean I already have made the flight plan, but um, we'll set it up. Oh, here he is, Speedy Gonzalez, look at this dude! Hightailing it man, he is a man on a mission, he is, look at that! Oh my gosh, dude, he needs the toilet, he does, where's he going? Whoa, whoa! On your left, eh, he says. Hey, Captain America here, come on, let's go then. Come on then, let's go. Here we go. We're gonna follow this dude all the way. Too close to him, he'll piss off, won't he? Oop, where's he going? Hang on, we need to contact the tower, don't we? Let me, uh. Because we need to know when to cross the uh, thingy. Where's he going? E. Yo. Man, this guy's a little ferret here. I'm trying to catch up with him here. I tell you, I'm so glad he's taking me to the runway. I won't have a clue otherwise. You know what I mean? Come on, what's going on? Oh, I'm pushed forward. Let's go. Come on. Sorry, I was taking a phone call. Okay. Random. Twitch, so that could be Clive. Come on, man, where's this runway? See, look, all these twinkly little lights, I would not have a clue. 
which one was the wrong way. Because you can hardly see these things late at night. Are we going straight on? Yeah? Okay. Come on, man. So the world tour, yeah, man, we're going around the world. We started in uh, Canada and we went down to uh, Oregon. We've taken uh, from there and, you know, we're in California right now and we're going down like South America, Bahamas, Florida. It's going to be awesome. Um, we're going as high as the Arctic Circle. You know, we're going to see Norway. Guys, honestly, it's going to be mega. And by the time we finish, by the time we land back in Vancouver, we will be flying in the 747. Okay? And, you know, we took off. We started this thing in this plane, the single-engine Cessna. And this is its last flight. This is it now. This is uh, we're the last time we're going to fly with this puppy. Because, um, you know, I'm advancing on to more aircraft. You know? I can't wait to start flying, the, you know, like Airbus and stuff like that. Um... Is the wrong way, man. I can't wait to get in the air, guys. See the little twinkly lights of uh, California, you know? It's awesome. You've got Black Marble hosting the night lighting, guys. This is sp sponsored by Black Marble, you know? Um, I should say affiliated with, really, not sponsored by. Actually, no, I can say sponsored by. Extended lights were given to me by the developer as a present, so yeah, I can say sponsored by man. How's the sound going, guys? Is it okay? Are all the the sound levels are they fine? Like my audio mixed with the uh, the engines, can you hear them purring away? As well as like the, the the other sounds and everything. Let me know if it's uh, if it's out of sync or anything, you know. So yeah, so today's flight GPS, and then the next flight we do in the Fokker 50, we won't have a GPS unit, so we've got to do the old VORs. You know, but um, I've got Sky Vector to give me all that information. But it's on my flight plan anyway, to be fair. So it won't make a difference. And when we get into cruise, question time, uh, talking about streaming, you know, and also uh, a topic quite dear to my heart that I'm totally shocked by um, that a lot of people in the community do. Like, I could not believe it. It's crazy, man. Even top streamers do it. And I'm just like, what? I feel like we're going to be driving to uh, Santa Barbara here. How how far away was I from the airport, man? Like, was I in another airport <laughs> before we have to get to the runway? I've got to, like, literally navigate the entire... Uh, he's getting away from us here. Let's uh, navigate the entire airport, by the looks of it. Santa, San Francisco airport must be one giant-ass airport. You know? I feel like I've been driving forever here. Oh, here we go. Request clearance to take off, man. Is this the wrong way? Oh, it can't be. Man, where's the wrong way? Roger on that, mate. Oh, right, okay. Uh, oh, hang on, this is the wrong way. Are we traveling down the wrong way? It can't be the same the wrong way. Oh. I mean, my indicator here is at the bottom, so we're, we actually need to turn around to take off. But I don't... Are we going down the wrong way right now? Seriously, all I see are lights. I don't see a wrong way at all, man. But these are the uh, thingy wrong way, actually. These, these red lights here. Alright, hang on here. 
Listen, we can't. Do you know what? I need to cheat here because I honestly can't tell what the hell's going on. Let's let's bring up the uh, God light, shall we? But ah, that's <laughs> the God light. Right. Okay. I see. I see what we got to do. Right. Okay. Right. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Right. We just follow follow these, and we follow the green lights to the left because the runway is there. This dude better move out of my way in a second because uh, I want to go around here. Where is it? Oh, I suppose I should. Oh, yeah. Oh, he is. Look at that. He's turning me anyway. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Hang on. I better follow him still. I didn't know. I oh, thank you for that, mate. Thank you very much. Right. So the runway is here. I think. Should be anyway. Hopefully it is. <laughs> Might have to turn on the god lights again in order to position myself on the runway. Man, it's too confusing. Right. Oh, hang on, wait. Is that an aircraft there? What's that there? Do you know what? It's too dark, man. That's an aircraft, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay, so we can't really get onto the runway just yet, can we? Until he takes off. Is he going or what? Let me just make sure he is an aircraft. Try the old god light again. Oh yeah, he is. What's he waiting for, man? Yo, dude, what are you waiting on? Position and hold, orbit 5039, that's him. I mean, I was cleared for takeoff, mate. I think I need to skip ahead of the queue. Yeah, I was cleared for takeoff, so that was the last thing I heard. So let's let's shift him out of the way. Oi, mate. Hop it. We're coming through. We had specials, permissions. Yeah? Excuse me. Just cutting in. Right. I, I, is this the wrong way? This don't look like a wrong way to me. One final cheat. See, this is where Navigraph would be a hand... Oh, look at that, man. We're not even pointing the right way. Jesus. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, I might I might start Navigraph again. Get them charts of the, the airports and stuff. Oh, hang on. What am I saying? I don't need to. I've got FS con flight control for that. That comes with, like, the airport and map data included but for free. Right, let's let's position ourselves in the runway here. Get into the middle. Because we're going to take off. Right. Not much that I have to do to start this bird appearing. Pretty much already done. Right. Yeah, me too, mate. Taxi light should have already been on. Oops, a daisy. My bird. That's me, mate. He better hold off, because we're going. Boom, boom, boom. Here we go, guys. Rock and roll! I don't even know if we're taking off in the right direction to go to see the... Um, there we go. We're in the air. To see the Golden Gate Bridge, but that's where we are headed for, guys. We're headed for the Golden Gate Bridge. In fact, you know what? I can't even see any of these. Let's turn the lights on. Let's get these. Displays are going. There we go. Beautiful. That's flaps up. Uh, departure one. Yeah, it don't matter, mate. We're going to cancel in a second. Um, should we tune? We know what we're doing. We'll take it from here. Right. What we doing? Uh, which way are we going? I can't see that display properly. Right. Uh, autopilot on. Um, let's see here. Uh, heading. Yes. Um, and we're definitely going to need some vertical speed happening. Oh, God. you got to be quick here, man. you got to be quick. There we go. 1,000 feet. Why are we going down? That's going... That's fine. Right, so, okay, we need to turn a little bit. 
Boom. Oh, guys, look at that. Look at that. I think, it, I think it's time to turn the flashlight off. We don't need the flashlight anymore. But guys, look at that out there. Holy moly. Hey. San Francisco, baby. By night. Right. Let's get on our course here. We need to... And we're going up to 15 thou. So let's just set our heading for that now. That's that set. Flaps are up. Um, that's all set. We're all good to go, man. 1,000 feet. So there's the Golden Gate Bridge, guys. Can you see it in the distance? Just there. Look at that. So this, um, by the way, guys, the scenery uh, is different from the last time. Last week, I had Orbex's um, Southern California installed, and that's what was the bridge that we landed on. Um, I actually gone back to some old FSX. Um, is it FSX or version 4 P3D? I can't remember which one. Um, but basically, I, I've installed San Francisco X from US cities, from um, uh, Lime City, I think it is, um, as well as the Los Angeles one as well. And they work in version 5, guys, with no needing to update them. So I'm going that, that's the bridge. That's the San Francisco uh, bridge that you get with San Francisco X. And I'll tell you, it's a lot better quality than the one you get with the Morbex. So I'm quite psyched about that. Um, engines are running a little bit hot here. Chill them beans off. There we go. Right, we still need to turn here. Um, right, we need... Well, we will contact Northern... Oh, is it Northern California? Sorry, not Southern California. So I thought we were in Southern California, but I guess it's Northern California then. Um, we will contact them because we want to do. We want to cancel our five thing. Hey, Don, how's it going, mate? I see you there. Oh, come on, man, let me in. This is the last time we're using default ATC, by the way. Um, we will be using um, Pro ATC in the future. So, right, I'm gonna cancel my IFR. Oh. You know what? We will do that. 310. And he's proceeded us up to 10,000. Do you know what? We'll just leave this. We'll, we'll just stick with this. We're going up to 15,000, guys. This dude's talking for him. Good, yeah, cool. I want to cancel this now as well. Yeah, I, I just, we're going to follow our own GPS signal thing here. In fact, I'm going to turn back to the heading I was going to. Or was it 13,000? Obviously, this is not a procedure you do in real life at all, you know? I just don't want them changing me every five seconds, you know what I mean? So, we'll leave that open now. That's it. So, that's that sorted. Uh, what plane are we in? We're in the Grand Caravan, mate. And that is the view you get, because you're a first-class passenger, Don. Um, or this view, if you prefer. Which might be a little bit better. I don't know. But, yeah. Uh, is the moon out tonight? I'm not seeing a moon in the sky tonight. But yeah, we're in a grand caravan, so uh hang on a second. Let's go in here. Looks like I'm lower. Weird. Um 
Cessna Grand Caravan, and this is the final time we will be flying this bird. Um, the, we're, we're going to Santa Barbara, and she's going to get retired. You know, we're going to pick up a new plane, you know what I mean? Oh, cheers, Don, thank you. Um, we're going to be picking up the Fokker 50 in Santa Barbara, and we're going to fly that bird to Santa Monica. And then that will be the plane we use for the next few legs of the trip. So we'll take that one to the Grand Cara uh, the Grand Caravan. We'll take that one to the Grand Canyon next week. Can't wait for that one. That's going to be awesome. Um, and then on from there to I think Los Angeles. Is it? Another thing as well. I had an email from I can't remember the Similites. I think they're called. Um, that the time zoner thing is now ready for version 5 and that's basically an add-on that keeps track of the sim time to make it accurate evidently uh, there was a big improvement from version 4 to version 5 for keeping the sim in time but in Australia and a couple of other areas of the world it's still not been corrected so according to sim elite anyway so the I use this app basically which completely keeps track of the time. Have we got a clock in this uh, cabin here? Here we are. So uh, we we took off. Oh, that's the altimeter. <laughs> um, I don't know where the clock is. But we took off basically. I think it was. I don't know what time it was. Um, but it will keep the exact time. Actually, there should be a clock on the board here somewhere. Where is it? That's. I thought that was it. But that's not the time. Is it on? Is it on the display? Is it? See it. Anybody see it? Actually, I want a height map. Let's bring the height map up. Terrain map. There we go. Let's see, see the mountains, man. <laughs> Where's the mountains, man? What is the software called that keeps the time in sync? It's called uh, Time Zone, I think. Hang on, let me just double check here. I can't remember the exact name of it, guys. But you put it in your scenery library and it sits at the top. There it is. Simulate Solutions Time Zone Fixer. It's the, And it must sit at the very top of your um, scenery library. Although I don't know if it's going to make a difference with the add-ons that are sitting on top of it. But anyway. Um, but it basically, I mean, it's great for version 4 because it does keep accurate time in your sim. Um, and it's great for version 5, it seems. But to be honest, I kind of use it also as a place, place mark. It's like any new installments go into my scenery library, I make sure it's, you know, it's time zone is on the very top at all times. Did I get it from Sim Market? No, I. Oh yes, I did actually. Sorry, I, I did. I got it from Sim Market. Um, but I got my update from direct from the the website uh, Simulates, I think they're called. Um, I didn't go into my Sim Market. You know, I got it direct from source. But yeah, it's really, it is a really good add-on. It's totally worth getting. So the time zone fixer is compatible with version 5. Yeah, yeah, it's just, I just got the email today. So I was like, I'll install that puppy now. Right, let's, uh, so we're basically, we're going out and then this is our flight today. We're going around. I mean, we're doing a bit of a backwards, but basically it was because I wanted to see the bridge, um, which we've seen now. The Golden Gate Bridge, which uh, is somewhere. I don't know where it's gone now. Somewhere beyond here. Yeah. Hopefully there won't be any bad weather. Actually, is active sky running? Oh, yeah, yeah. it's... Right, 10,000 feet. Start thinning off this, uh, thinning off the fuel a little bit. Right? So we're going to be doing a massive turn in a second here. Where's my terrain map? Where is that not showing? Come on. Give me the terrain. Oh, yep. It's getting 
bumpy up here. Oh, yeah. Man, windy up here, guys. Yeah, man. Right, um... Right. So, yeah, this is the last time we're using, um, default ATC, guys. In fact, today at 7.30, I think it is, which is in an hour and five minutes. Oh my God, I don't think I'm gonna make it. Um, Mike Collins on his YouTube channel is doing a pro ATC tutorial stream and questions can be fired and he'll answer them. And he's basically gonna go through all of the settings and everything for pro ATC. So I really recommend if it's something, if that's something you're interested in, if it's something you wanna know more about, Go definitely watch that stream um, because it will it'll, he will super help you he's like the god of pro ATC you know so uh, he knows everything about it. but we will start using that from next week onwards fingers crossed so yeah we definitely won't be using default ATC and then from there we'll you know Probably Vatsim, maybe. I mean, if we don't use Pro ATC next week, we'll use Vatsim. You know, but all this uh, talk will be finally finished. You know what? I'm just going to turn now because uh, I want to get there. You know what I mean? So we'll do a turn. We'll do an early turn, guys. I tell you, I can't wait to start flying the jets, guys. I really can't start wait. I can't wait to get into like the Airbus, uh, you know, A318, uh, A320, stuff like that. A300, A340, A350, um, and then the 747, that's where we're gonna end up, guys. I cannot wait. Right, why isn't my terrain map showing? Terrain map should be coming up. I click on it, but it doesn't, it's not displaying in the, I'm not seeing the mountains. Right, we're coming up to our uh, peak. 15th thou. That's all she wrote. So that should start chilling out now for us. And then once we hit 15 thou, guys, that's it. We can start. I'll start co the, the continuing the conversation that we started. Oh, look at that out there, guys. Twinkly little lights. I love the night flights, guys. I love the night flights. Who likes night flights, eh? Put your hands up, man. There's Golden Gate Bridge still in view, man. We just did this massive U-turn, basically. I think that's where we took off from over there, I think. But there's the Golden Gate. That's, that's the bridge we flew under and landed on last week. But that wasn't good enough for us to get on Simbest. Man, they, they got too many drama queens screaming the odds that, that they got a showcase. They ain't got time for somebody flying, you know, under a bridge. Anyway, right. That's about as thin as the mixture will need to get. Let's, uh... She's, she's ready now there. So that's it, guys. Right. Let's, uh... Boom. Right, guys, um, question time, right? So every, guys, anytime I do a live stream and we're at Cruise, you know, my subscribers on Twitch, anybody who's a member of the cabin crew can come get into Discord, get on the microphone and start to have a chat with me um, during the cruise flight. As well as that, um, I'll go through any questions that anybody's got about their flight sim. Um, I've, already answered, I've already gotten one. Why the hell am I doing it? Right. That was my question. I started off with, um, and basically, you know, I I do I do flight simulation because I love it, and I like to and I stream it because I like to share, basically. Um, and I you know why do I offer help to people? Because I know how frustrating it can be when you want something to work and can't and don't know the answer and don't know where to find the answer, and I know how frustrating that is, and I just want to alleviate people's frustrations. Full stop. That is it. I want everybody to have a fun, easy life, you know, and that's that's 
the whole reason why I help people. Um, not just in flight simulation, but, but when I try to anyway. That's the whole reason I wanted to have an easy, fun life, you know. Um, so, continuing on what, you know, I had a lot of people who contacted me um, asking about how do I stream, you know. And um, I, I decided to put it together. I decided to uh, put it together in a little sort of, you know, how do you stream? Well, the one thing you've got to ask yourself first off is why are you wanting to stream, you know? What is the main thing driving you to stream? Because if it's money, like, get it. Just don't even bother starting to stream. If you're thinking, damn, guys, I, I watch these guys on YouTube and I watch these guys on Twitch and they're making loads of money. And it's like, if that's the sole reason why you want to stream, forget it, okay, because you ain't never going to make it, if that's your thinking, you know, I need loads of money, you know, forget it, you've got to do it because you enjoy it, full stop, otherwise you're going to end up putting on a fake persona, you're going to have to, you know, become a jester in every single stream just to entertain people, do you know what I mean, um, and, uh, you, you know, people will see right through that. Know, people will see fakery on mile off. Let me just shut the flight plan. Ah, we're off course. Oh dear. Let's uh, correct this sucker off. I think we need to go one, three, five. Water. Look at the water. Um. So yeah, so that's why, um, and there's plenty of uh, things that you can do in that stream, like in terms of where to stream, you know, there are so many places to stream, Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, I mean, there are loads, but whichever one you do, and I really suggest to choose one and stick with it, because from my experience, okay, I'm on YouTube and Twitch right now at the same time, but they're totally different audiences. You know, not everybody who has a YouTube account goes on Twitch and vice versa, although some people do. But people who watch YouTube are totally different types of people who watch Twitch. Twitch is a 100% streaming platform. It's not really an archival video library like YouTube is. YouTube is like an encyclopedia for videos, okay? Um, and it's just getting into streaming. So it's like, it's a very baby infant program for streaming. You know, Twitch, definitely 100% for streaming, but you can do both. Um, me, in the future, I'm literally going to be sticking to one or the other in future streams. You know, the reason I'm on both right now at exactly the same time is because of lockdown, basically. But when lockdown ends, that duo streaming thing will also end. And I will either just stream to uh, YouTube or just stream to Twitch. Now... I actually, on uh, Fridays, I just stream to Twitch. That is it. I don't stream on Fridays to YouTube anymore. I do my virtual pilot life, in fact, just on Twitch. And then I sort of edit that down to a nice, cleaner video and upload that to YouTube. And that's kind of how it worked that. Um, but Wednesdays and Thursdays, it's always a two-stream job, which we'll be finishing. And it will be Wednesday streaming on YouTube. Thursday streaming on Twitch probably, or maybe even not even that. Who knows? Um, things may be changing. So, um, but I, w I would recommend sticking with one platform, and that basically means as well that when you stick with one platform, you're not spreading yourself thin. You know, you're not um, having to manage two different chats. I'll tell you guys, it's not easy when you've got two chats um, happening at the same time, and ha your half your audience cannot even see the other half of that chat. Um, and so they're missing out on a conversation a little bit, you know. So that's another reason why I'm not really wanting to continue this double streaming thing, you know. 
Um, so, yeah. So, if you're, and we're, and I'm totally talking about flight simulation streaming now because there's different types of streaming. You've got gaming streaming and you've got flight simulation streaming, and they're totally two different animals. You know, you would not have the same PC setup for a flight sim than you would say for Call of Duty or for Fortnite or PUBG or whatever it's called. You know, you'd have a different setup. Your monitor actually would be even different. And I tell you, ah, oh, my lights. The, the amount of jokers in Facebook groups who have got, hey man, I've got this 144 refresh monitor, man. It's super widescreen and it's awesome. And it's like, yeah, that's no good for flight simulation, by the way, okay? That type of monitor is not good for flight simulation because it's not divisible by three, okay? Full stop. Now, that's a great gaming monitor. That is a super fast monitor as well. And you can really make use of that in Call of Duty. But for flight simulation, you know, it's a totally different beast because, like, Call of Duty, fast frames, you know, high frame rates, you know, you're talking like 120, 140 FPS, you know, in order to get those kill shots. Flight simulation, long frames, you know, it's more of a slower um, render, you know, rather than, say, Call of Duty. You don't need a, a very fast display like you do with Call of Duty. In fact, you need a slower one, you know. You need one that's more stable sim as opposed to one that actually it's going to make it a stuttery mess and i guess i've seen so many people on facebook groups who are like yeah i've got this great monitor like this and i'm thinking yeah but i bet you got stutters mate haven't you you know um and if you have got small stutters there is one crucial thing that has to be in place in order for you to eliminate those stutters especially when you're streaming you know um like that's the one thing i hate like it took me about a week when I got my new PC to streamline to where it wasn't stuttering um, and it wasn't laggy for you guys because that's one thing I hate. I don't want you guys watching a slideshow. I want you guys seeing exactly what I see. But when you're streaming, sometimes that ain't possible. You know, sometimes you, you, you guys are not seeing what I see on my monitor. You're seeing an encoded version of that. And if OBS, which is what I use to stream with, if that starts to lag, then you guys are seeing a choppy slideshow. Whereas I'll be like, hey man, I'm loving this, man. I'm getting loads of smooth frames here. It's beautiful, but you guys are like, this is a slideshow. Um, you've purchased Time Zone Fixer from Sim Market. There's an auto update included with the Sim Market purchase. Okay, Danny. Or sorry, thank you, Clive. <coughs> so, um,. So one crucial thing, right, um, is your uh, your frame rate, okay? That is so crucial. Um, not only... Hey, Martin, how's it going, mate? I see you there on YouTube. Um, not only is it crucial for a smooth stream, uh, you know, to whatever platform, but it's also important for the sim in order for you to fly smoothly as well. And I've seen so many videos of, on YouTube where it's just stuttery, 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 stuttery. And it does kind of get annoying when you're trying to enjoy a video and you're trying to listen to the person, but what you're seeing is just da -da 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 and it, it just really hurt. It makes me upset, to be honest, guys, when people don't get, you know, their sim running smoothly. And, and the, one of the main reasons, and it's so hard in version 5, by the way, for, to achieve this, it, the, I don't know the way they've done it, the way they've made version 5 is just a bit, you know, different, but um, it's, it's a, it was a lot easier in version 4. So the frame rate, as you can see in the corner here, you know, it's sort of going between 32 to 35. It doesn't generally jump up higher than 35 or lower than 32. Um, I mean, to be honest, even for my standards, that's jumping around far too much. You know, that needs to stay between one or two different values, and it's usually between 30 to 31, you know, but the fact is, I've got unlimited frames because version 5 prefers that for some reason. Um, and so it's kind of getting a little bit jumpy, and that's too much for me, to be honest. Um, if you lock your frame rate to a single value, okay, um, and that single value is easily determinable by what monitor you have got and what PC you have got, okay? 
there is absolutely no point in going I want to see 60 frames on my screen at all times you know that just I mean that's just pointless to be honest anybody who's in the chat going mate I'm running 60 FPS in flight sim I mean you're just showing yourself to be like you don't actually know what you're doing to be honest um, because you don't need to be running and a computer like not many PCs will be able to handle 60 FPS constantly with loads of add-ons successfully you know uh, at the end of the day it's all about a smooth experience it's all about immersion isn't it how much immersion do we want to fill our screen with you know um, I mean that goes against like what add-ons you choose you know so like for me black marble night lighting is the best so I, I use black marbles night lighting over say Orbex um, or anybody else's, you know, because I prefer their look, you know, and so that's the one level of immersion that I want, the stars, you know what I mean, I like these, I love Stargaze, look at that, it's much better than default, I feel, but it's my personal opinion, and it's like, this is the layer of immersion that I've, I've set for myself, you know, um, and that's, a, that's, a, that's like your own personal preference, guys, you guys have got your own personal preference, I totally respect that, um, and the FPS is another layer of immersion, another deciding factor in how you're going to enjoy your stream. Uh, sorry, how you're going to enjoy your sim. And if you're not getting a smooth, you know, movement in both your flight or your camera view, if it's stuttering and if it's lagging, then you're not going to enjoy it, man, honestly. But it won't work with True Sky. Well, it won't work with True Sky. Oh, Black Marble, yeah. Black Marble doesn't like True Sky, basically, um, and that's that's a topic for another stream, Tom, trust me. That's a can of worms you're opening up there, mate. All right, but yeah, you basically have to have True Sky turned off. Um, but you know what? It doesn't actually matter, Tom, about True Sky, because True Sky is an atmospherics um, app, as it were, or uh, engine, yeah, within the sim, and it affects the lights, you know, every surface in the sim is affected by true sky it's a lighting atmospheric feature yeah nighttime man there is no light it don't matter what surfaces look like most likely they're going to be black and that's probably why it's called black marble because you only see the night lights so to be honest at nighttime you don't need true sky running because it doesn't it's not kind of used in the sim, like, you know, if I mean, if I turned it on now, we'd lose all them stars, but that's it, that's the only thing that would make a difference, and to be honest, the night lights down below wouldn't really change that much, your your viewpoint at the night time wouldn't change at all, really, with, with True Sky on or off, because it's not affecting what you see at night, it's affecting the lights, so, to be honest, I don't care if True Sky isn't compatible with Black Marble, because I don't use it anyway. I mean, that's why I like to whack on Skyforce, you know, at night time, um, or whenever I'm using Black Marble. And then during the day, I use True Sky when I'm not using Black Marble. And anyway, that's how I run it. And it, that's, it's everyone's personal preference at the end of the day, isn't it? You know, how do you run your sim? It's your personal preference. But the most important thing is your frame rate, okay? If you have a frame rate that is jumping between 20 and 40 or jumping between 30 and 70 or jumping, you know, it's going more than, say, five frames out either way is a reason why you're probably going to have stuttery stream. I keep saying stream. It's why you're probably going to have a stuttery sim. Sorry. Okay. Um, and, and definitely, and, you know, like the reason I'm talking about this is for streaming. You need a single value for a stream. So everybody now is watching my stream at 60 FPS on YouTube or on Twitch. You guys are seeing 60 FPS. But obviously, as you can see in my sim, I'm not running 60 FPS. I'm only running like 32, 33, something like that. Um, and, and, and the reason is, is basically, obviously, you know, there's like two or three frames that are getting dropped um, from the sim to the encoder. And, you know, when that's spread over 60 frames for you guys, like, you guys don't even, rec you don't, it doesn't even register, you know, I don't even notice it, you know, whereas if I, if I actually change my OBS settings to 30 FPS, 
and I had to drop two frames, you guys would notice that a lot more, you know. There's a lot less leeway in 30 FPS. So, um, in other words, my, street, my sim can actually go down by two frames and you guys wouldn't even notice. Do you know what I mean? I wouldn't notice, but you guys wouldn't notice. But, um, why, why am I talking about FPS? Okay, so even if you're not streaming, by the way, this is valuable information. And it's really the secret to running a smooth sim. You know, it's the, it's, it's the essential information any simmer really needs to know. If you've got a frame rate that is jumping between values, you're, you're going to have stutters, you're going to have lag, you're going to have an uneven experience in your sim. And I don't care who you are going, oh, yeah, I get smooth experience, and I'm running, like, whatever frames. And it's like, you need to be running a single value, right? And there's multiple reasons why you need to be running a single value in your sim, okay? When you run unlimited frames like this, okay, that the, that's you're telling your sim, right, what's most important, right? Um, no worries, Clive, mate. Um, what's most important is the highest frame rate you can make, right? And your PC hardware is determined by that value. So if you've got a, the best system in the world, it's probably going to try and hit like 60, 70, 80 frames, right? And at that rate, your hardware is getting maxed out. Something's got to give in the sim. So you're probably going to have blurry textures. You're probably going to have slow loading scenery. But your frame rate is going to be brilliant. But at the expense of something else. Okay? Uh, we'll make sure we're on track here. No, we're not. We need to do a turn. Whereas if you lock your frames down to a single value, right? You're telling your sim right. You need to achieve 30 frames, okay? Once you've done that, the rest of the processing power of my PC will go towards texture loading, will go towards uh, the objects loading as well, you know? You won't get blurries, you won't get, you know, oh, hang on, where's all my trees gone, man? Where's all my buildings gone? Oh, well, suddenly they, they batch in. Oh, right there they are. You know, you will have everything loading in, you'll have pin sharp textures, you know, be, and then you will have a, a smooth sim as well. Because at the end of the day, our, you, we only need like 25 frames uh, a second to see a, a, a smooth sim. That's it. That's all you need. You know, 30 frames is even quite high. Do you know what I mean? Hey, Ralph, how's it going, mate? Welcome to the party. We're just talking about uh, how to get a smooth sim going, mate. And especially if you're being a streamer, how to stream as well. Um, I need to do another turn here. We're heading to Santa Barbara, where we're going to pick up a Fokker 50 and take it to Santa Monica, where the stream will end. <laughs> um, oh, look at that beautiful twinkly lights out there, guys. Oh, I love it. Um, that looks like a face, guys. Look at that. It looks like a police officer wearing a hat. There's his nose. Excuse me. There's his lips. There's his chin. And there's his hat. See that? How weird is that? How freaky is that? Police officer right there, looking that way. The nose. It's weird, isn't it, man? <laughs> anyway, um, okay. So yeah, having 30 frames per second is super crucial. Uh, critical, really, to not only having a smooth sim, but having a smooth running stream as well. Did I see a shooting star? Mate, we're still waiting for these shooting stars. They should be around somewhere, yeah. Did you see one, though? I didn't see one, mate. You guys, let me know if you see a shooting star. They are out there. Chris, Chris, you know, swears they are. And I believe him, so... Hang on, let me, uh... I need to do another turn here. 150, I feel. That'll keep us on course. We gotta watch the mountains out here, guys. There's mountains here. We gotta be careful, man. So, why why is it crucial to have a single figure? Okay, well, one, it balances out the load on your PC within your sim. And if you're streaming, it means your viewers are not gonna see a slideshow or, you know, they're not gonna see a stuttery thing, you know. Um, they're gonna see every frame that I see. Um, but not only that, you're, you, as a simmer, you're going to have a much more fluid experience if you've got a single value FPS. Now, 
again, like I said before, this is jumping between 31 to 35. That's probably a little bit too much of a jump for me. I prefer it to just jump between one to two digits, you know, like 31, 32, or 30, 31, that's fine by me. Three or four is a little bit, mm, I'm not happy with that, but version five is a lot harder to lock down to a single digit than version four was. So what is this, what is the digit? What is the magic number for your frame rate, right? Well, there is a single magic number, by the way, okay? Everyone's gonna have a slightly different magic number though, okay? It's totally dependent on the monitor you're using, the hardware, your PC that you're running, okay? And if you're streaming or not, okay? So, I, for me, I'm a streamer. Um, I use OBS to stream with, and I want the streams out in 60 FPS. So for me, my magic number is 30 FPS. That's a, a number my PC can manage, as well as having pin sharp textures, as well as having a smooth sim. You know, my PC can manage 30 FPS with all the add-ons and all the bells and whistles going and still then give it a, a smooth ride for me and a smooth ride for you guys, okay? That's my magic number. Now, you guys might have a different magic number. It could be 40, it could be 25, it could be 50. You know, it might even be 60. Be a little bit of a waste if it was, but, um, and probably, you know, not always, you know, you're not gonna get 60 FPS with True Worth California or something, or, do you know what I mean? Like the heaviest scenery uh, in a PMDG aircraft. You, know, you might not achieve 60 frames in that situation, unless you've got like three PCs tied together. And by the way, if you're using multiple monitors, it gets even trickier for that single value, okay? Because they all need to be, I'll, I'll talk about this separately, okay? It's a bit of a longer conversation. So. My magic number is 30, and the reason my magic number is 30, as I say, is because my PC, right, in fact, let me, let me, let me just bring up some graphics, guys, um, that will help a little bit better, that's an outro song, that's the wrong one, right, so first off, your PC setup, okay, uh, is, is what's important here, right, how much processing power has your PC got, okay, I'm running an i7-700 uh, CPU, um, which is overclocked to 4.9 gigahertz. I've got 16 gig of memory, and I've got the 1080 Ti graphics card with 11 gig of VRAM. Um, and so, all that equals I can run 30 FPS successfully. You know, if you've got a lesser machine, you might need to run 25. If you've got an even better machine you could probably get away with 50 or 60. Um, so that's your first thing that you need to think of, is how good is your PC? You know, there's like two or three different variations of good quality to determine what number your magic number is. The second thing you need to think about is your GPU, okay? There are settings in NVIDIA, and by the way, I don't care what anybody says, NVIDIA, graphics cards work better with flight simulation than AMD do, okay? You get smoother frame rates, right? And you get an easier sim experience with, I'm not saying AMD don't run sims and they don't look fine, I'm not saying that at all, they do, but you will get better frame rates, you will get a smoother frame rates if you use NVIDIA, okay? Um, this is still an FSX designed sim version 5. Any P3D is basically FSX 2, you know? And FSX, you know, was designed on Intel CPUs and NVIDIA cards, okay? And they work the best with them, okay? If you're not running an NVIDIA graphics card or uh, an Intel CPU, you will be able to run a sim, flight sim. I'm not saying you're not, but you, you're gonna have anomalies. You're not getting the best out of the sim. You know, there are certain things like your frame rate might be harder to achieve, you know, or there'll just be certain ticks that will happen that won't happen with NVIDIA and Intel, you know. But your graphics card settings is definitely your second thing you need to think about, you know. My, my refresh rate on my CPU, uh, my GPU is set to 30 hertz, okay, because that's the frame rate I want to achieve. You know, every second you see, it's getting refreshed at 30 hertz, not 60. 
you know, because like if I changed it to native, that would go up to 60. But my PC ain't gonna manage 60 frames, you know, with with every add-on that I want to run um, successfully. It's going to go to 45, maybe 50 at the top end, you know. So for me, 30 is in every situation a number my PC can handle, and it's also a number my monitor can handle. I've got a 60 hertz monitor, okay? And exactly half of 60 hertz is 30 hertz. And it, it, exactly why you guys are watching a 60 FPS stream right now. Even though my graphics card is running 30 hertz, my sim is running 30 hertz, uh, 30 FPS, but the encoder is able to double that to 60 for you guys. And it's just an easy, double that's all it is it doesn't have to do it like it's not a, it's not like a factor of three you know or a factor of five or it's an odd fiddly number it's an easy just double that number and that's 60 frames for you guys and OBS is set that way as well it's set to use my GPU power in order to send the signal off right Um, so your PC, your graphics card, your monitor, those are the three things, um, and your flight sim, by the way, those are the three things that all have to be in sync in order for you guys to enjoy a smooth flight, you know, with all the bells and whistles running, you know, um, and a stream as well, you know, basically you want to keep your flight sim for FPS at a single value for OBS to manage easily. Because if it's jumping around loads of different values, then it's going to stutter in OBS for you guys. And then you guys will see stutters, you know? Even if I don't see stutters, you guys will, because the frame rate isn't able to multiply or divide by easily, you know? If it's going from 35 to 40 to up to 50, and it's just jumping loads in between those, you know, they're numbers that aren't divisible by three, so OBS is like, well, I don't know, it's hard to make this easy, do you know what I mean? It, it, it's hard to make the 60 FPS constant, you know? I've got, to, I'm, I've got to drop so many different frames to make it at 60 FPS, and it's it's going to be stuttery for you guys. So, do you know what? I, and I really don't think a lot of streamers that stream on Twitch are aware of this fact, you know? I think they just set up their sim and they get it running smooth, and they're not aware of the reason why their settings are the way they are. Um, obviously, you know, I, I watch a lot of streamers on Twitch, and they do have smooth sims. Not everybody does. There's a few people that stutter, and quite big names, like people who have very big channels, and yet I still see stutters in their sim, and it's like, oh. I don't think they realize why they set these settings the way they do. I think they just set them, and they go, right, I don't get stutters with that. I'll leave that as it is, you know? And I gotta tell you, it's probably the main reason why so many people haven't actually... I only know of two streamers who stream version 5, you know? Um, three if you include me, you know? Um, and it's like, why, why not, to be honest? Because uh, there's more features in version 5 that make your sim look a little awesome than there are in version 4. Oh, all your add-ons are in version 4, but it doesn't have true sky, which is a really nice, beautiful feature, you know? The cloud system in version 5 is much better than it is in version 4, you know? And that's my opinion. Oh, we're coming off, of course. So it's like, why wouldn't you want to stream with, like, the best sim, as it were? Like, oh, it, you probably would. You probably would. X-Plane is probably better than P3D. Who knows? It's subjective. But... It's like, I don't see many people stream in version 5. And I think it's because they can't set their PC and their sim up in sync. I, I think they, it, there's too many crashes at the moment. There's too many glitches. And it's like, well, to be honest, there ain't if you, if you set it up correctly, you know? Um, so find your magic number, guys. If, if you want to be a streamer, if you want to set up a stream, you need to have a single number in your sim for your frame rate and a frame rate that OBS can manage. At the end of the day, you can actually set your OBS frame rate up to any value you want. It's so easy. Like, let me let me quickly show you something here. 
This is OBS, guys, and this is what I use to stream with. And it, it this is OBS Live as well with stream elements. And basically, it gives me the chat. Um, it hooks up with Twitch, so I can actually see when people, you know, follow my channel like that. Thank you. Peter Hoogley is now aboard. Um, but the settings here are the cr most crucial thing here. You've got stream, you've got uh, output, you've got audio, and you've got video. Okay? And you can actually set the the frame rate value to anything you want. Um, and it will it will dish that out, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, it's got to be a value that your PC can handle. Because if, you, if I tried to put like 120 in that, my PC would not make 120 frame rate, you know, for Twitch. And at the end of the day, Twitch wouldn't even allow that frame rate, I think, on its stream. You know, it basically would be like, no, I think 60 is the top end that you can stream uh, on Twitch to. Uh, 30 is another acceptable value. YouTube as well. Uh, 60 FPS is an acceptable top end value. Is the, it's, the, it's the the highest value basically. So that's why I choose that. It's because it's double what my PC can handle for my sim, and it's uh, the the best frame rate you can actually see on on uh, YouTube or Twitch. So uh, I don't scale down my resolution to 720p. Um, I did try all that. Um, and there is no difference between 720p and 1080p. There is no major difference on a 4K monitor as well. Seriously, like, if your PC can't handle 60 FPS, scale down your resolution to 720p and try that, and I bet you any money it'll, it'll do that. There are two different ways, right, to set up your settings here, okay? You can either encode, and I can't change it because I'm streaming and, you know, other things. But there's the two different ways that you can set up your encoder, um, which I can't change. Yeah, I can't change that either. Uh, is through either your GPU, which is what I'm doing right now, the NVIDIA uh, NVINC, right? Or through your CPU, and it'll say X264, okay? Um, now, there's a, there's a bit of a debate if your CPU actually is better. Yeah, I've done tests. You get a higher quality stream on your CPU setting, right? But the rub on it, okay, is you've got to have a really good CPU. You've got to have like five gigahertz plus, you know, in order to run a stream on your CPU. Because you might be thinking, yeah, but Flight Sim's more GPU heavy. So I've got more headroom in my CPU. It's like, yeah, but OBS streaming with your CPU is even more intense than your flight sim using your GPU. So, like, you've really got to play with the settings to get a smooth, you know, stream that doesn't drop frames if you decide to use your CPU. If you've got, like, three computers and you're using that to stream with, then you probably could get away with a CPU stream. Most people use GPU, you know? And even though, like, my GPU is getting nailed by my sim, there's still enough room. Look at that. It's only running at, like, 20%. Um, I mean, I don't think it would still run that if I got rid of this. And I brought that into view. Uh, it probably run it. It's probably running a little bit more now. Actually, no, it ain't. It ain't sweating that much, to be honest. My GPU is pretty much taking a nice little chill walk in the park. Um, but with OBS, it, it does, you know, if like I stopped OBS, that would probably have, you know. Um, hang on a second here. Uh, OBS uh, does use your GPU and your CPU quite intensively. Um, it's better quality stream using your CPU um, than it is your GPU, but the CPU gets nailed more than the GPU. So your GPU can handle it better, and it's acceptable, which is why most people probably stream using the GPU. Um, but at the end of the day, you've got to do what's best for you. So like, if you're going to stream to Twitch, you have to use a constant bitrate. And that bitrate is tied directly to your internet upload speed, okay? So if your internet upload is like 25, giga, 25 megabytes, right? then you've got, you, you can do a full max stream on Twitch because that you're only allowed to stream to like 6,500 
megabytes, and that's it. On YouTube, I think it's something crazy like 40, but on Twitch, you're only allowed six and a half, and that's totally enough. I set mine to 7,000, and I use that for both YouTube and Twitch, and at 1080p, that's enough bit rate to satisfy a 1080p stream, you know? If I ramped it up even more, it would just mean my PC's gotta work harder, and my internet's gotta be better in order to achieve that, so. You still have your graphics card over, you still have your graphics card overlay. I know I do, mate, I know I do. Thank you, Clive. Right, so the third thing, like I was saying, is the monitor. And it doesn't have to be a bloody monitor that can manage 144 hertz, okay? Because that's good monitor for Call of Duty, but it's a shit monitor for flight simulation, okay? Um, if you're sporting a monitor that goes up as high as 144, guess what? You can't divide that by three, okay? 144 divided by three works out as not a single value, okay? And that's what you need to think about. It has to be divisible by three. Um, so 60, that's divisible by three. Two, four, six, nice and easy. You know, it's also divisible by two as well. So 30 to 60, 30 frame rate in my sim, 60 frame rate in my stream. Nice and easy. 144. Hang on a second. 60. 60 FPS for OBS. Right? So, well, 144 divided by 2. Okay, so it's not going to be an easy double up number. Right? So, how do I set 144 FPS in my sim in order to match that? You know? Um, that's, what my, that's what my frame rate has to be at in order to get a smooth experience. You know, if your monitor is refreshing at 144 second, 144 frames a second, your PC, ha your your sim has to match that in order for you to see smooth. If your PC or your you know simulator is capping out at say 50 on 144 refresh, the difference between those two numbers is the amount of frames that have to be dropped or that aren't getting rendered rather in your sim which means you're going to see stutters, you know, because your refresh rate is higher than what your actual sim can allow, you know? So you're gonna see problems, you know? Honestly, I've seen people in Facebook groups boasting about having 144 refresh, and it's like, you're just making a fool of yourself, mate. Hey, Jurgens, how's it going, mate? I've also seen people who go, yeah, I run my sim on all the cores. And I'm like, why do you need to do that, mate? If you're running P3D, you do not need to be running your sim on all your cores. In fact, you're probably going to get worse performance if you do. Like, I have my sim running on just four cores only. And that is it. Where's my sim gone? My sim's gone off. Where is it, man? Seriously, like... Mate, are we actually in the sim? I'm not seeing P3D in this list. The list of active processes, you know? And P3D ain't here. What's going on, man? Processes, man, where's P3D? Man, are we in the sim or what? That's so weird. It's there, it's definitely there. It's running five different things at the same time. Well, where is it in this list? There it is. Oh, it's, it's it's icons change. Sorry. Okay, that's weird. Okay, so I have my um, my sim running on just the four cores, and I don't have it running on CPU zero. By the way, <laughs> if you do, it'll max that out. If you do, by the way, it'll like throw it all onto that or something. It's crazy. Um, but I have it running on you know cores like or threads four to seven. And then I spread the workload of everything else across the other four as well. So really, the only thing that's on, you know, these last four is the SIM. So this helps my CPU to manage itself so much. Spread the workload across a lot of different things. If you have everything maxing on every thread, on every core, you know, you're not going to be getting the best performance from your PC because it's basically maxing out every single app on your PC, you know, to the fullest. 
it's basically sweating its ass off, you know. And that percentage would be like 90 if I did that. If I, if everything you see in this list was it had on all seven cores, right, or all seven threads, sorry, then this would be like 90%, you know. But I spread the workload out. I mean, the only two things that are really running high are OBS and P3D, and that is it, you know. Um, just these two only, you know. Um, and the work is spread between them two on all the threads. You know, people who sit there in Facebook groups going, yeah, I'm running my sim on all the cores. And it's like, you're just showing up, you're just showcasing how much you don't know how to run a flight sim, to be honest. Because <laughs> you're making your PC sweat more than it actually needs to. You could be using that processing power for other things, you know? Man, where's all the lights gone, guys? I think we're going out into the mountain areas where there's no lights now. We just got a couple of lights here. Oh dear, we gotta we gotta be careful here because uh, we don't want to be hitting mountain ranges, guys. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So yeah, so the, your your monitor, by basically, is one very important aspect of flight simulation. Okay, a 60 FPS monitor is all you really need. Okay, if your monitor can also handle natively 30 um, hertz as well, then that's good as well. Okay, but 60 is all you ever need. You don't need a monitor that says 144 hertz or even 120 hertz. You know, that's still a little bit more than you need. It's like that'll be good for Call of Duty, but for flight simulation, you're going to have problems. You're going to have stutters if you have a monitor like that. Um, the next thing. Uh, is the flight sim you actually have okay so your flight sim let me show you mine runs a lot of things right so uh, here's my list of add-ons that I'm running at the moment all of these tick boxes and then my scenery library again all the tick boxes which you know I don't tick what I don't use and that goes right down to my like I, it, it, I could even untick all this here as well like my base stuff as well because each one of these is a number in a grid which dictates a part of the world and i wish i had the graphic actually now to hand but so like the numbers that start with say 100 are for a certain area of the world and i'm betting it somewhere in the north pacific like orbex here have layered that so i could untick anything from europe and it wouldn't make a difference. Like, so all these numbers here, I could probably untick because we're not flying over there. And so it doesn't need to actually put it into the sim. It doesn't need to render it. It's unnecessary. The mesh that I'm using here, the scenery, I've only ticked Western North America because that's where we're flying. We're not flying over Australia, Asia, or Europe. So I don't need to tick it. It doesn't need to come into the sim. You know, I only tick what I'm going to see in my sim. Um, and that helps the performance of the sim. Let's get back in. Um, so it, it really depends on what kind of sim as well that you want to run. You know, do you want to run a sim where you're flying at 42,000 feet all the time? Because you guys don't need to have trees activated for that. You guys, you know, you can turn off your trees and you can turn off your buildings because you're not going to see, you know, churches and cathedrals from 42,000 feet in the air. You know, your most important thing for you is the draw distance, you know, max that out, okay, because uh, you need to see off to the horizon, you know, but then again, if you're flying down like 3,000 feet off the ground, yeah, the draw distance isn't necessary because the curvature of the earth doesn't allow it, so max out your trees, max out your buildings, but bring your draw distance considerably down, you know. I'm in the middle ground at the moment, so I've got settings that reflect both. But build a profile for what your PC can handle for the altitude you're flying at. And again, that is another way to ensure that you can match your magic number frame rates, you know. You can't see them for the cockpit view. Well, I'm talking about the picture here, uh, Brian, mate. That's why I've got it on the screen, mate. I'm not pretending that's me, by the way, <laughs> flying the plane. It does actually match up, though, doesn't it? Yeah, but we're, t we're talking about streaming. We're talking about flight simming. Um, and your frame rate is uh, crucial in, in both aspects, okay? And the final thing is if you're going to be streaming, 
you know, decide what your PC is going to be used for. You know, is it going to is your stream going to be, you know, your OBS? Is it going to be CPU based or GPU based? If you've got th like multiple PCs, then it could be CPU. It, you could render from your CPU and it'd be fine. But if you've got one PC for flight simulation and a stream, which I don't recommend, then you're probably better using your GPU to be honest. It'll handle it better. But find your magic number, guys. In your sim, find your magic number. Because that magic number, right, will de dictate, okay, um, how smooth your sim will be. Lander trees can grow very tall. Clive's on it again. The library order was hidden. Uh, what you mean, Brian? The library order was hidden. Oh, you wanted to see my library order, did you? Okay. We can do that. The order of the library is also important, by the way, for um, how it showcases in your sim. So, there's a video I did, by the way, on, on the order, and it's a very particular order. Um, so, it basically goes where your default shit is at your bottom of your library order. You know, things that are not priority at the moment, like the default terrain and default scenery. You know, they're not priority, okay? In fact, global trees shouldn't actually be that low either, but fair enough. Um, they're, they're basically at the bottom, you know? Um, and then as you rise to the top, you know, you're going to get to your mesh because that's what's at the lowest point of your sim, you know, is your mesh, you know? Texture goes on top of it. Autogen goes on top of that. But underneath is your mesh. So, you know, the very next thing in your library order should be your mesh, which is right here. These little entries here. Now, you know, it's so much better to get, like, um, third party. If you're in version 4, get FS Globe, uh, FS Pilots Global Mesh, whatever it's called, you know. Um, which, to be honest, I'll be giving away. Um, I've got um, a copy. Here it is. I'm going to be doing a future stream, by the way. And I'll be giving this puppy away in one of my streams in the future for free, okay? And that's beautiful in version 4. If you're running version 4 and you haven't got this, then wait for that stream that I'm giving it away in because this is the perfect add-on. Um, it really does define your mountains a lot better and makes your scenery look sharper and look nicer in your sim. I don't actually have any third-party uh, meshing at the moment because the default stuff has actually been improved. Excuse me. But I will put uh, the current version of FS Global in, in within like the next couple of weeks. So uh, after your mesh, you then have... Um, your vector information i believe um so that's no not your vector information your uh, land class information sorry so basically where are your lakes being placed where are your fields being placed where are the rocks being placed it's a layer of information that tells the sim where textures sit you know um it doesn't contain textures generally but with Orbex it does. But it tells the sim more where they're being placed, you know? And then in the global base and in land class for Orbex is the textures where they actually contained. And then it just positions them, you know? Um, and then you should have your, um, your regions, your region information, like you know, so for me, I I don't I don't use Orbex regions anymore, um, but I do have regions myself, airports as well, um, and then you have your vector sitting on top of that, and your libraries sit on top of that, and the very top is your add-ons. Have you put the updated vector in yet? No, and I never will, mate. Trust me, <laughs> like that. The vector information in that is absolutely useless because they haven't updated it. It's still the old vector information, which, to be honest, Black Marble's vector information is a hundred percent times better than the vector information in Orbex. It's actually got more uh, vector information, whereas I think it's like the the one from Orbex only contains like half of the vector information of the world. Uh, Black Marble contains all of it, but even the default vector 
in the sim is better than the vector from Orbex. Like they even state on their website that they haven't actually updated or changed the vector information. Um, they've just taken out the elevation data program and um, I, I can't remember the exact terminology, but basically Orbex vector for P3D version five is a waste of money <laughs> or a waste of time even installing it. Trust me. Am I correct in saying that Orbex software automates the file order? Yes. Uh, well, you know that. They know, you know they do five. Um, so yeah, I don't actually play with the order of my scenery library that much. I let Orbex do it, you know, um, and it and it works out fine. Now, if I when I first install something, it obviously shoots to the straight top of the list. I will then layer it down to where I want it to sit, and then you know run um, run Orbex and actually do the scenery insertion and sort of scenery library order and it'll reorder things but it always chooses the best location for things you know at the end of the day you've got that insertion point put in so as long as you're putting your newly installed in items beneath that layer which orbex will be doing as well then you'll never have a scenery library issue to the point where you need a third party manager and i think that's where things get tricky if you're using Orbex and you're using stuff like add-on or organizer or whatever it's called, you've got two different programs that are fighting for power over your scenery library, and they're basically tearing it apart. Um, and it's unnecessary. It's like I trust in Orbex, and they've never let me down in terms of the scenery library order. You know, the more things you put into your sim, the more chance you're going to get it messed up. Basically, you know. Um, especially if you use uh, XML add-ons for scenery, you're truly going to screw up your sim. Like, the only things that I XML are aircraft and airports, and that is it. And if an airport has a lot of scenery attached to it, then it goes in my scenery library, and so it can sit in the index as well. But only airports which will sit on top, or only, only things that sit on top of the library, um, which are like airports and mega scenery texturing, um, gets XML'd into my, my scenery library, you know. Where can I get the simulator? Um, you can buy it off the, you can definitely buy it, alright guys, here, alright, I'm going to touch on the piracy thing now, um, but yeah, you can buy it from P3D, uh, Jurgens. You literally buy it straight from the, the people who make it. Um, definitely do not get it free off any site. Guys, I had to unsubscribe to two YouTube channels. Um, in the last month, one of them was directly showing you how you can get P3D version 5 for free, how you can crack the program, and how you can download it for free. And I'm like, you serious, dude? Like, you're actually showcasing. And this guy, this was a guy, by the way, who is a streamer for P3D. Like, he streams Flight Simulation. And he's showing his viewers how to get it for free, how to crack it. And I was like, dude, are you seriously teaching people how to pirate? Like, that is just so illegal for starters. And if you're a true flight simmer, it's so morally incorrect because you're actually nuking yourself, okay, without even realizing it, but you're nuking yourself for flight simulation by pirating it, okay? And I'll get into that in a second, but, and, and you know what? He put a heart on my comment and I'm like, what an idiot, right? And so I unsubscribed from his channel because I don't support piracy one bit, right? Um, and in fact, I had another guy who was messaging me going, how do you set up a YouTube channel? Da, 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 da. He's recently set up a sim as well. And he told me about this site, which I had only vaguely heard about when I first bought P3D. And it's called Root Tracer, I think. And it's like, basically it's a site where everything is available for free, evidently. Um, you can, I don't, I, I don't know, but you can have everything for free and you don't have to pay for anything. And I'm like, you serious, mate? That's basically, yeah, you're talking about piracy. You're talking about downloading software that's for free. Oh, by the way, a lot of these, uh, pirated things have viruses in them, right? Or malware that can trace and track you. Uh, and, and honestly, like they stick all sorts of shit in it to where it can actually mess up your system. Um, and that's basically because they want to make money. <laughs> They'd give it to you for free, 
but it's going to be loaded with things that you don't want on your system as well, but it's going to unload all that stuff on your system. Um, and they'll make money off it, you know. And that's why they do it, because they make money off it. Where are we, man? Are we, of course? No, we're not. We're fine. How far have we got to go here? here we go. We're about halfway through to our destination, basically. How much does it cost? So, uh, I've got the academic license. It's $60, 48 quid. Um, there's a professional version, but that's for people who just come into it for the first time, I think. <laughs> Everybody gets suckered in by that, I think. But there's no difference between the academic and the professional version, um, unless you're going to be a developer. If you're going to develop scenery and aircraft for flight simulation, then get the developer plus version, or the professional plus version. Anybody else, just get the academic. Yes, exactly, Brian. Piracy is theft. It's a legal theft at the end of the day. But not only that, you're stealing from yourself, you idiot. You know, honestly, you're stealing from yourself. If you use a pirate site or if you download where you haven't paid for it, you're stealing from yourself. Okay? Because, like, guys, our our community, our, our niche community is like... Something like a hundred thousand people strong, and that is it. And that's not very much compared to other uh, hobbies, you know. And it's like the developers they need to profit from the sale of their products in order to develop the next product, you know. They need to take the cash that they've just made from that plane they just released, and they need to put it directly into their next best plane that they're going to release next year, or their next best scenery or airport. And if people aren't buying their products because they're getting them for free elsewhere, guys, we ain't got any more money to put into the next item. It's like, man, I gotta go get a bank loan or something, or guys, I gotta fire my staff, which means it's gonna be three years before I see another airport from this developer because they can't afford to develop the next item because people are pirating their current item. So if you guys go to torrent sites or this Rue Tracer sites, or if you illegally download it, you're stealing from yourself in the future, by the way. Okay, you're preventing developers from releasing the next scenery item or airport or aircraft that you're gonna go, oh, I love that. You know, I love it. And, and you're also forcing developers like PMDG to go, guys, we've now gotta charge you for an upgrade. Okay, or uh, Milvis to say, guys, we've got to charge you for the next upgrade because we simply we ain't got any more money. Do you know what I mean? Do you think that the price will drop? Uh, no, it's it's always that price. You're either going to pay two hundred dollars, I think it is, or three hundred dollars, no, two hundred dollars. Actually, there's three price levels. Okay, there's um, there's fifteen hundred dollars, right? Um, there's two hundred dollars, and then there's sixty dollars. Okay. So, uh, 50 quid, 200 quid, uh, 1,700 pounds, okay? Whichever one you want to pay, you know? Go with the 50 quid, go with the 60 dollars, that's fine. It don't go down, there's no sale price for PMDG. They don't go, guys, this buy, we're getting free now. Never. <laughs> they're, they're basically, Lockheed Martin, the military complex, is what sell this, and they don't have sales, you know, with their missiles. So, they're not gonna have sales with, you know, the software. Um, but piracy, guys, yeah, if you do it, you're stealing from yourself in the future, you know, and you, you're shooting yourself in your foot. So it's like, why do it? But also, you're putting your PC at risk as well. I mean, truly, only idiots pirates uh, software for Flight Sim, or anything really, but Flight Sim specifically. I've actually had people give me pirated software, and I didn't realize it was pirated until I found out this bloody Rue Tracer site thing. And I, I've actually found a, um, like, a, the web address in one of these things that somebody gave me. And I thought, honestly, they were giving it to me out of the kindness of their heart. But no, they downloaded it from this Rue Tracer site and deleted that software. I got rid of that bloody bullshit thing. Honestly, it's... Anyway. That's my rant over about piracy, guys. I, you know, I want to use P3D in the future. Can everybody just stop pirating everything and buy it, please? You know, wait for sales, guys. That's the best thing. Orbex has a sale. Like, how many times a year on 50% off? That's when I buy all my stuff, is when they're having a massive sale. And their sim market's been doing, like, freebies for Flight Sim. And I grabbed every freebie I could. 
Um, there's always a sale on, guys. There's always 50% off. And just wait for that. And then buy twice as much, you know? And if and you know what? If you ain't got the money, then don't fucking buy it. Like, don't, don't have it. You don't need it at the end of the day, do you? It's not essential. You know, save your money and then buy it. Like, I've got hundreds of planes. I'm only flying one at a time. Let me see if there's been any more questions added to Discord. No problem. Um, so yeah, how to stream. Basically the secret is you need a single frames per second number, you know, um, and you need that coordinated with your, your software encoder, which I use OBS. I don't use hardware encoding because at the end of the day it's just another electrical device another layer of things that can go wrong. Software encoding, totally fine. And I use OBS, Open Broadcast System, and it's beautiful, or software, Open Broadcast Software. And it's fine, and it works. And my single FPS number in my sim is coordinated with OBS, my monitor, and my graphics card. And that's why you guys get this smooth flight, the smooth view, you know? That's why it's not stuttering. It's not jumping, it's not lagging. You guys are seeing what I'm seeing as well. And the sun is coming up. Look at that. Guys. The sun on the horizon's coming up here. What time are we at? I, actually, I don't know the time because I can't find the... Yeah, we're definitely not going to be landing for... It's 7 o'clock now. We've been going for an hour and a half. For the entertainment and learning level that users get from flight simulation, the cost is very cheap. Uh, yes. Guys, do you know how much it costs to become a pilot? Okay? We're talking a quarter of a million pounds. If you want to learn to become a commercial pilot, you're paying something like £120,000 to up to £250,000. Okay? And that's why, you know, only the good-looking people become pilots, okay? <laughs> because they can afford to, man. They got rich pe parents. Or they're, they're, or they're rich themselves, you know? And guess what, man? I'm, I'm learning to fly as Cessna. And all the actual, you know, procedures. Or a, or a Boeing 747. Or an Airbus uh, A330. And it's cost me, like, what? It's cost me 50 quid for the sim. It's in terms of the A330. It's cost me uh, 72 pounds, I think it was, um, or was that the professional series? That was a professional series, actually. Um, I can't remember how much the A330 cost. It was about 70 quid. I want to say 65, 70. Um, so it's like for like a, basically for like 120 quid, I'm learning to do something that it could cost me a quarter of a million to do. That's like maths that makes sense to me. Okay, I'm not getting the G-forces in the plane. I'm actually 42,000 feet in the air. But I'm still learning the systems. I'm still having to learn what the pilots have to learn. I'm still having to learn the air law, the navigation, uh, the meteorology. You know, that's everything they have to learn. Plus, they got to front the cash, you know? It's, uh, it's yeah, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. So, yeah, so if you want to be a streamer on YouTube or if you want to be a streamer on Twitch, you know, it is great, but you've got to say to yourself, why am I wanting to do this? Why am I doing it? I, I love to share. I love to share, you know, I, I love, I, I wish people, I wish I could hear you guys speak, you know? That's why I've set up the cabin crew thing for anybody who is a cabin crew member in my Discord can come up and chat in Discord and, and actually speak to me, you know? during the cruise level of the flight. And that's what I want everybody to be. I want everybody to be in this cockpit with me chatting, you know, because I love to share, basically, at the end of the day. And not like, sh it's show off and share is not the same thing, you know. I like to share so maybe somebody will learn something. Oh, that's how you do that. Ah, right, okay, I got you. Thanks, mate, for that. Yeah, that, that helped me, you know. Oh, wait, man, how does he get that night lighting like that? Oh, so that's how you do it. Oh, cool, yeah, cheers, yeah, thanks. You know, that's why I like to do this. That's why I stream. Because I like to share at the end of the day. 
Like, I don't have to stream. I could easily do this flight you know, off the stream to myself, but that's kind of selfish. I prefer to share the experience and so somebody else is enjoying it as well, you know? You don't make love to yourself, do you? <laughs> There's a reason for it. There's a reason why you include somebody else. You know what I mean? We're all making love to ourselves. We're all making love in front of our PCs, you know? Do you want to do it to yourself or do you want to do it to your partner? It's up to you. Airport down here. What airport's that? KNLC. Right. Oh, do you know what, actually? I think uh, we're going to have to think about a descent here. Where are we uh, going here? Let's have a look here. Where, and where's my mountain? My mountain. I want to see my terrain information. Why isn't it showing? Give me the terrain data, man. Come on. Give it to me now. It's not showing. That's, I can't read that, mate. Take take off that and leave the mountain stuff in. It should work, to be fair. Man, this thing's broke. See, I, I want to see that, but I want to see that black. And I had this set before. Here we are, KSBA, that's us. Let me do a turn. Uh, where, 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 where. We need to be turning a little. 150, I feel. That'll do me. Yeah, so um, we need to, uh, let's see. Well, I think we're going to descend down to like 6,000 feet soon. Let me, oh, is my airport coming up on here? Say no. Not yet. Hey, MS, how's it going, mates? Welcome to the party. We're just coming into the land at uh, Santa Barbara, where we're going to get to dump, dump this airplane, guys. This airplane will be saying, see you later, alligator. And we're going to be picking up the Fokker 50. And it looks like we're going to be hitting uh, sunshine when we come down. The sun is coming up at right tree. Look at this. Hello. Ding dong. Look at that, guys. Gorgeous, isn't it? button. Went outside. Whoops, a daisy. Right, I think we're going to get down to 6,000 feet here. Um, we need to start a descent. So let's take her, let's take her down. Set this puppy up for descent. And we'll start our slow descent down. Um, hey, there we go. we got some Terrain information popping up now. Maybe I'm too high, that's probably why. It only shows when you're actually going down. Which we should be okay, we shouldn't actually hit any mountains now. We've passed through the valley of death. So it's all, it's, it, there is some mountains over here I feel. But if I, use, if I use the lights, if I can see lights then we're fine for heights. What sim is this? Hey, RIP90, mate. Welcome, welcome. This is P3D version 5. Um, we're flying, and uh, we're just coming in for landing, actually. We're about 10 minutes away from landing. Let's see what Project Fly says about that. It's got its own thoughts. Still over uh, Pennsylvania, man. 
wait for this to uh, sort itself out. Where are we? There we are. That little dot. <laughs> uh, we're 32 minutes away from landing. So that's where we'll be coming into Santa Barbara. We're picking up a Fokker 50 and we're driving it. We're flying it all the way to Santa Monica. So that's a short flight, that is. And we're only flying 9,000 feet during that one. So... So if anybody's got any issues with their sim, if anybody's having problems, are you guys having stuttery sims or crashes in version 5? Then hit me up and we'll sort it out right now. And then you can get back in and start flying and it be smooth, man. You know? Man, I see a, when we, you're out in the sticks, you don't see lights as, as well as you do. Um, when you're in the city. When we hit Santa Barbara, I reckon the lights will start to come back again. We're out the middle of nowhere, so I feel that's why we're not getting as much night lighting, you know. It is the Grand Caravan. Yes, this is the final flight, guys, of the Grand Caravan. We started flying this in Canada. We took it to Oregon, we're in California, and it's gonna stay in California. This is, when we land at this airport, that is it. We're not flying the caravan anymore for the world tour. We're flying the Fokker 50, and um, it'll be like that for a while. And as soon as I finish my commercial pilot's license, we can get into the jets, guys. We can start flying like the A318, the A330, um, we, don't be, we won't be flying the PMDG 747, uh, 737, guys. That ain't happening. Hey, Fabian, mate, how's the A330? Mate, I haven't even flown it properly yet. Like, seriously, I, I haven't even, right? Because, um, uh, you know, I like you know I like my checklists. You know? I've only just managed to sort out the checklists for the, uh, you know, like, these were in hiding, these were. Because I've only just recently updated that lot. Um, version 5. I was a bit reluctant to update when the updates first came out for the um, the A318 uh, series to A321 because people were saying wait for the second hotfix to come out but then I spoke to somebody who was on the beta team who actually has the second hotfix and they say you can it doesn't really affect your add-ons so yeah you don't have to worry about that so I was like right let's update these puppies quick uh, get them into version 5 what plane we fly in, mate? This is this uh, car grand. Uh, blah, blah. This is the Grand Caravan still. This is the last flight, DJ, of the Grand Caravan. How's it going, mate? The EFB has the checklist. Yeah. It does. Yeah, it does have that side display. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, man. It's, I'm not a big fan of it, to be fair. I don't have Navigraph, so I don't really, you know. Like, oh, I want to say I don't have Navigraph. I do actually have Navigraph until, what is it, the 18th of this month? And then that'll run out. And I don't know if I'll renew it again. It's like, I only get Navigraph every once in a while when I want to update my uh, cycle stuff. And that's it. I just get it for the one month. And then that's it. Um, if, I, if I'll continue the subscription, I, I don't know, mate. I don't know. I don't... Maybe when I get to fly in the Airbus then I will probably, but I don't see the value of it, to be honest. Like, this, this, uh, 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 what do they call it, AROC cycle of information, that'll keep me going for, like, a good few months. I won't need to update till like, the end of the year, you know? I use Sky Vector for all my uh, flight planning needs, for all my, even, you know, all my uh, frequencies. Okay, it doesn't have the airports. It doesn't give me the airport information. But, um, well, it does actually. It gives you airport information, but it doesn't give you, like, the taxiway and all, like, what Navigraph does. But, you know, I'm totally happy with this. Like, I don't... Yeah, I don't need to spend £10 every single month when I can spend £30 for the entire year. Sorry. When I can spend about 20 quid, sorry, for the entire year and still have the same experience. I put my money where I... You know, where it's best served. Oh, look at that, man. So the FB thing, Fabian, mate, for me is I'm not that bothered about it to be honest. Like 
developers that go, yeah, we've got an electronic flight bag, guys. And, okay, fine, but uh, don't bother me, man. Uh, we need to do a turn here. I feel those mountains will hit us if, we, uh, if we're not careful. One, six, five. Oh, hang on, we were going down. I just realized, man, we're still descending. We were going down to 6,000 feet. Do you know what? I'm going to cap that off at eight. Oh, dudes, I've completely forgot we were descending now. We're going to... Uh, oh, no, actually, no, we can get down to six. That's fine. We can get down to six. 6,000 feet is fine. What is, this, what is the limits anyway around here, around these parts? What's the, uh, the altitude? Any altitude restrictions, man? 8,600. Oh, gosh. Well, we better... We better... Actually... <laughs> we better stay at 9,000 then, to be fair. Let's put that back up to 9,000. So, there, we're there. Um, and then when we come here... Um, we can descend down to 6,000 when we do the turn here. Okay, that's when we're going down to 6,000. Right. So we need to climb, basically. So let's, let's get climbing, mate. Come on. Where are you going at? 9,000 feet, mate. Come on. Take me. Coming up a tree now, isn't it? The old sunrise. But yeah, uh, Fabian, mate, I can't wait to get into the Airbuses. You know, I haven't learned how to fly them, mate. I've had the that professional Airbus fleet for like a year, and I haven't even used them once. I never installed them in the version four, honestly. I I, uh, I, I don't have the entire like uh, airplanes that I bought installed into my sim at once. I kind of do them in batches, so I've got a lot of general aviation aircraft in, but and I've only got a couple of um, or a few uh, actual full airliners. There we go. Nine thousand feet. Got to keep that restriction going. We're off course. We're coming in, guys. We're coming in. <sighs> guys, everybody who's following me on Twitch, everybody who's subscribed to me on YouTube, that's the view you get. Uh, you're a first-class passenger, guys. If you head into my Discord, you'll be a first-class passenger. And once you reach cabin crew status, you can come and join me in the cockpit. In other words, in Discord, we will chat, you know, vocally on the live stream like you can come sit up here in the cruise phase and we can have a chat and when you reach first officer we can do uh, checklist uh, setups you help me set the plane up you know you do the checklist in discord and I'll, I'll push the buttons you know and then when we get to when you get to captain we do joint cockpits you know and I believe the uh, if the A330 is anything like the A Airbus series uh, joint cockpits are easy. So though I can't wait for that, guys. Can't wait for that. Man, we got to land this puppy soon, man. Mike Collins is going live in 10 minutes. I don't want to miss it. We might have to watch, like, Mike Collins while he goes live. You tend to fly only the jets and not GA. I only have one GA aircraft. See, because I'm doing the virtual pilot life, I've started exactly the opposite to Fabian. I've started off on general air aviation aircraft, and I'm going to be ascending up to the heavies, and then probably that's probably what I'll be flying for a while. I probably won't fly these. I'll probably have to delete all these Carinado stuff off the because uh, I won't be using them. They'll just take up space. I probably won't actually because um, they're XML in so. Yeah, thread the needle here, guys. Man, where's... The, hang on, where's the coast? We're quite far, we're quite far away. 
But we've got to, uh, yeah, we've got to get back here. We're going towards there. So we, we actually we do have to actually thread the needle. We have to thread the needle through here and then head off to the sea. So maybe coming down to 9,000 now was actually a bit unnecessary. I think I should have stayed at 15,000 then. Yeah. So when we land, guys, I'm going to be getting into the Fokker 50, and we're going to be hopping it to Santa Monica. Okay, so we're saying goodbye to the old caravan, okay? We're saying goodbye to this guy. He served as well. He was beat up as well. But we'll be saying goodbye to him. And we'll be, you know, jumping in the Fokker 50. And that will carry us for a, a good few legs. You know, that will take us down to South America, the Fokker 50. Until we change again. And, you know, what do you want me to change to, man? Like in the future. You flew over Birmingham today, mate. No way. For Dublin to Vat on Vatsim. Oh, mate. You should have let me know. I'd have waved to you as you flew over. <laughs> Hey, JW Cruz, J Cruz, J, J Cruz, 825. I see you there on Twitch, mate. How's it going? Lovely little emojis there. Guys, I love emojis, by the way. I love them that much. I'm actually going to be get, getting my own emojis. I'm sort of collecting emojis at the moment. So, uh, or emotes, as they're called, sorry. So, Twitch people will have some emotes to play with because you guys are collecting all those bits for nothing at the moment. But... You'll be spending them soon, don't you worry about that, guys. I'm going to have special emotes on Twitch. But don't worry, the fun will come to YouTube as well as soon as I hit 3,000 subscribers. How have I been? I've been okay, mate. I've been. Today's been a crazy day. Today's been a... We're, we've been feeling the, um, the lockdown today. And, um, but, you know, when you get into the air and I'm flying, man, I love it absolutely love it it's like forget your worries forget your troubles come on let's get flying you know I love it oh man so in the next couple of weeks guys there's going to be some big changes to the streams here okay so at the moment I'm streaming on both YouTube and Twitch that will stop and I will stream to either just YouTube or just Twitch depending on the day so some days you'll see me on YouTube some days you'll see me on Twitch um, and only my virtual pilot life flights on Twitch will go over to YouTube. Um, other than that, it'll, that's it. That's all it will be. And then, but, but what I will be doing is a lot more pre-recorded stuff as well. So I might even do some pre-recorded flights, guys. <laughs> Man, I, oh God, I, I can't tell you guys. I can't tell you something, but guys, guess what? Don't believe what you see in trailers for flight simulation. Don't believe it. It's all bullshit. Okay. I've had. I've had. I, I can't really say this. I can't tell you how or who's told me this. Okay. Um. But this is a well-known fact, and I can't. I can't. I can't. I, can, I promised him I wouldn't say. But. How can I say? I gotta say that. I gotta say something now. Right. So when trailers are made for flight simulation, guys, and you watch the trailer, in fact, do you know what? Let's bring one up. Man. What was the last trailer that bounced for? Uh, that dropped for flight simulation was it Orbex? Uh, one of their regions was it? Hey. What was the last? Uh, somebody put in the chat, please. What the last trailer for flight simulation was? I'm pretty sure it was Orbex, to be honest. Fact. Let me scroll down and maybe we'll see it. Uh, no, I'm not seeing it. You know, I'll just put Flight Sim Trailer. That was loud. Flight Sim Trailer. Let's see what comes up. And not that. Okay, we can't use Microsoft. That's a little bit. How come Microsoft is the only thing that comes up, eh? I know someone that is on the beta test and I was telling him that it looks like a phone simulator, like Infinite Flight.
because of the way they showed altitude and throttle. It, was that for J Cruise, mate? Because it got the most hype. Hey, Agent Cody, how's it going, mate? I don't know what you're talking about, though. Because it got the most hype. Oh, is that why I'm... Sorry, that's why we're seeing... Okay. Uh, do you know what? I think it was Orbex was the last trailer I saw. Let me type it in. Yeah. Oh, no, it wasn't Africa. That was it. California. Four days ago. Right? We'll, we'll kill the sound because I'll get killed for copyright. Guys, we're going to watch this, right? And I just want to point something out, right? So... These trailers are made in a certain way, okay? A specific way, right? And I'm gonna wait for that shot to appear that I recognize, right? And I haven't seen it yet, right? These, these trailers are made in a very specific way. That might be it. Do not believe what you see in these trailers. Hey, we just came from there. Uh, right, so right here in this shot, right, you're flying over loads of autogen, yeah? You're flying over loads of vegetation. Uh, you're flying a very heavy aircraft as well, by the looks of it. Look at all the vegetation, all the buildings, look at that. All the vegetation, all the buildings, and no stutters in the frame rates. Bull shit. Right? I don't care what computer you're running. There is no way that you can run all of that veg all that true earth like that at that speed. Okay? This is a well-known fact in the flight sim community, right? I can't tell you the specifics, but there is trickery happening, like especially here with all this vegetation. There is trickery happening to make you believe that all this is being run in real time. That's all I'm saying, okay? I can't actually tell you the specifics because I promised the developer I wouldn't, to be honest. But there is, honestly, it's possible they accelerate the video to have more frame rate. They do something, mates. They do something. I can't tell you the specifics because I promised the, the person I wouldn't, but they're using the Cessna 152. Um, but yeah, basically they're tricking you to making you think that there's loads more happening than there actually is. Um, and yeah. So just don't believe everything you see in a trailer, guys. Don't think, oh, my sim will run like that if I... I've seen that and I can get my sim to run like that. No, you won't. You won't. I couldn't believe it when I first heard. And anyway. I don't know why I said that to be honest though. Similar to the models, modeling clothes, they all look perfect. Danny! See, Clive knows what I'm talking about. Right, uh, we've got to turn to the right, is it? That can't be right. Surely it's got to be through here. Guys, look how close we are, man. The mountains right next to us here. Asian Cody, sorry, it's because of French. Like some of the senior developers that when they have great FPS and they don't use a payware plane, they use the small No, it's it's no no no, it's not like that J Cruz mate. It's not about they do use honestly heavy aircraft because they look cool, that's why. Um but that's that's not how they do it, mate. Right, let's see if our airport's coming up now. I don't think it is. No, we've got Hancock. Santa Maria. I want to be in America. Hey, that's where we are. Where are we? And I've lost this. There we are. We need to turn here. So we have to turn to the right. Ah, that seems a bit... Man, I, think, I think I made the, the, the turn too late here. Yeah, we got it. Do a 185 here. Hey, yo, yo. Yeah, guys, it's a massive, well-known fact amongst developers. But that's all I'm saying. Like, look at 
I missed. Look at that. Dude. I was actually kind of hoping it would be darker when we were arriving. Um, because um, I want to see the lights. So that's a bit of a bummer, really. That it's, it's actually... So what time is it actually the same? Because I, I can't find the clock in this plane. It is 5.22 in the sim. Man, I was hoping that we'd be landing at 5 a.m. I kind of timed that wrong, didn't I? For Microsoft 2020, there was an event and people were able excuse me, to play the sim. And the FPS was great. But it's Microsoft 2020 with the future technology. Mate, mate we've got that technology now. MS, I showed you how you can actually do that exact same thing they're doing in the P3D sim, you know? In fact, when we go to the Grand Canyon, you'll kind of see that, to be honest. In fact, as well as that, there is a developer, again, I can't tell you who, but there is a developer that is creating like a Microsoft 2020 for P3D. Confirmed, like, it's going to be awesome, and you guys are going to be able to use it, like, next week. Okay? I think I've just given the game away now by saying that. I did put my flops up, didn't I? Yeah. Ah, look at these piddly mountains here. Bleh. It's too bright for my liking. I, I seriously thought it would be darker on arrival. Oh. Hey Siri, shush. Turn off. So Siri's trying to get involved. You mean the scenery? Yeah, the scenery looks pants. Looks diabolical, the scenery does. I was hoping it would be darker when we were arriving, so we wouldn't see the diseased scenery here. I'm not running like any land, land class. I'm not running like, um, I'm literally just running global base um, and the city X um, of uh, Los Angeles. And that's it. There's the, and, and black marble vector. And that's it. Like there's no land class. There's no Southern California. There's nothing like that. Oh, the developer, sorry. Do you mean a scenery? No, no, not a scenery, Don, sorry. This is a... Uh, I don't know how you explain it, man. It's like an, an app, basically, that you'd use. Why, hang on, why are we getting this thing here? Hang on, let me, let me turn that shit off. Get off. Dude. Don't be in. Um, Santa Barbara, there we go, guys. Let's tune into Santa Barbara Tower. Uh, actually, let's listen to the ATIS. Oh, well, that has been kicking off. Right, well, we know, we know about Santa Barbara. There we go. Um, no, it's, it's, sorry, yeah, Don, it's not scenery. It's like an app, basically, that you're going to be able to use that will bring in, um, exactly what Microsoft are doing. It's, it'll bring in, you know, the world that you fly within on the fly, you know? Um, to P3D. Like somebody's working on that. Guys, this is the last flight with default ATC. After this, it's pro ATC, guys, or VATSIM. We're going to request a landing soon. Right, I need to know how far away we are. Okay, what's the uh, what's the deal with the height restrictions now? I think we've still got to maintain, yeah, 8,600 until we get down to this turn here, and then we can go down to 6,000. And that turn is coming up soon. And this mountain here is why we couldn't go down to 6,000 feet. <laughs> That's the reason, because we'd have crashed into it. So no Orbex. Uh, yeah, I've got global base Orbex uh, running here. Um, and that's it, really. I mean, I've got uh, Los Angeles City X from LimeSim. That's running uh, in the, out here. And Black Marble Vector and global base. And that's it. Like, 
I'm not, I'm not, to be honest, during the night time, the regions don't make a difference because you can't see it. So there's no point in running, you know, even land clash, you can't see land cloud. Now you can because it's bloody bright, but if it was dark, you would not see this diseased scenery. You wouldn't see this at pitch black, would you? Like, if it was literally like an hour earlier, see, it's like, you can't see it, man. So there's no point in having expensive scenery loading, taking up the computer resources, um, because you, you're not. I'm not going to see it. So it's like I just I'm running the basics here. This is the basics of the sim. Wow, here we go. J. Cruz, mate. He's written a novel here. This is my stuff, right? He's got the Corsair Cabard Series Air 540. Okay, uh, he's got a, an i7 6700 series processor quad core 4 gigahertz he's got his memory he's 32 gigged up and he's got the 1080 ti he's rocking good man um and he's liquid cooled on the cpu and he's running uh, ssd one terabyte mate your specs seem sound very similar to mine there hey hang on jay cruz mate are you alex i'm sure them specs i saw today on a stream no, the app. Oh, oh, sorry, Don. Was you when you said about no Orbex? Yeah, man, you won't need Orbex, mate. Seriously, this is like take away Orbex, take away every scenery t developer in your sim. It's total landscape in your sim, complete autogen trees, textures, night lighting, everything in one, beamed in. I mean, actually, I can tell you. Like because to be honest, guys, I've already announced this. It's 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 uh, it's called Virtual Earth, right? And next week you should be able to, or in the next couple of weeks you'll have the demo to it, and you'll be able to use it in P3D. And it's basically a little portal thing that that you know does exactly what Microsoft is doing, but they're doing it for the entire globe as well. But the demo I think is good for an area. So how much would that going to be? Uh, how much is what going to be, sorry. And it's, hey, man, we've all got these same, same PCs here. Except Brian's rocking the 2080 Ti, you know. Um, which is a good card. And basically, any Ti is a good card. If you're using NVIDIA, get a Ti, isn't it? The products I'm talking about, uh, how much will it be? Well, the demo's free. You, you'll be able to download the demo. Um, but the price of, I don't think that has been worked out they're still developing it so it's um they haven't even got a logo or artwork attached yet that's how early on they are in their development but uh the demo comes out in the next couple of weeks like within the next couple of weeks in fact i'll i'll, I'll, I'll message him tonight <laughs> or we get a wriggle on mate come on <laughs> we, we want it now oh look at that guys get the screenshots going on that one right. it's gonna be a big gigabyte like Orbex stuff no well that's it uh, J Cruz it's not really because you download it on the flight you know y yeah okay some of the stuff probably will be sitting on your hard drive but the rest of it will be you know used through the internet just like Microsoft are doing you know I mean I don't know guys it's like I'm not I love the fact that you're able to download on the fly because it saves a lot of performance, you know. Um, you don't have to have a beast of a PC to run all the scenery. But the only problem there is if your internet goes down, you're very limited to what you're going to have in your sim. I'm not on board fully with the running the sim through like your internet as well as your PC. I'm, I'm more on board with running it through PC like we do with P3D simply because I don't need my internet in order to fly, you know? Only for live weather. Whereas you, you will need the internet to fly in the future. And even though it's going to save performance in your PC and that's great, internet's not reliable, is it, man? You get dropouts, you get maintenance, you get can't afford the, the bill, so I can't, I'm going to have to go without the internet. Look at that, guys. Oh. Look at that. Hey. That's why you had to run a cable, because the 
Wi-Fi here sucks. Yeah, man, I, honestly, everyone's going to need a gigabyte of internet. <laughs> it's a big plus with the extra VRAM. Yeah, Brian, in it with the TIs, man. They're beautiful, honestly. I'm so glad Matt Davies put the TI in this machine. I'm so, thank you, Matt. Thank you. Right. Let's uh, let's go down now to six thousand, I think, because we can. We're gonna drop down to six thou, and we're gonna start a turn soon. The airport is over here somewhere. I don't know if we can see it from here. Uh, in fact, now that we're below ten thousand, let's uh, whack on the landing lights, which I've actually forgotten where they go. Where are the landing lights, man, in this thing? Oh, yeah, they're here. Oh, do you know what they are, Ron? I never turned them off. Oops a daisy. That's my bad. Right, we're going down to 6 thou. Actually, if we're going down on the water, we can actually get down to uh, 4 thou, I think. But we'll stick to what it says, actually, on the uh, maps. Right, let's do our uh, left turn here. Uh, I need to find the runway heading actually. One four zero. Oh, there's the runway there. I can see it beaming already. Right. Okay. So if we go out here and then turn in, right? Okay. Oh, hello. Whoa! Look at this beautiful woman here. Ah, wow, you got to show this off. Right. But his girlfriend's all dolled up. I think she's going out here with somebody. I think she's off out on the town. Honestly, she's just sitting there looking like a model. Just silently lurking. And then I turn around and... My God. you got to send get a picture of that in Discord. No, that's, that looks fine. That looks perfect. That looks nice. You know? Oh, your eyes, man. Yo, oh, man. These eyes are like... Hey, tickling me spine. Uh, can I post the link? Well, you can try, mate, if you want. But yeah, you should actually be on Twitch. You should be all right. But don't, don't, don't kill me if it nukes you. Right, we're going down to three thousand now. Um, and we're actually going to turn out a bit more to see. Because that's our runway, baby. Right down there. There's a Fokker 50 waiting that down there for us. Have I updated Active Sky with Beta 4? Yes, I have. I am running the latest and greatest 7459. The water looks pretty good. Guys, this water setting is on, like, low, by the way. So, I don't know what... It's on its basic setting. Because <laughs> we were supposed to be much darker coming in here. Ooh, look at that down there, man. Whoa. Um, yeah, it was supposed to be darker. So, I, I put the water setting really low down. The speed. Are we going fast? We'll slow down a bit. Uh, I, I actually, you know what? I don't want to be hearing you going too fast, mate. Forget that. I'm not a fool. But we'll slow it down. Um, what's this? Uh, you can run a big cache of the MSM to ease the download requirement and cover short out. Well, yeah, that's it, Brian. Yeah, I mean. Yes, yeah, some of it will sit as uh, temporary on your on your sim on your on your uh, hard drives, which then just means even bigger hard drives, isn't it? I don't know. I'm just not totally sold, mate. I'm just I'm keeping things in reserve. Right, let's start a turn soon. We are off course here, but I mean that's fine. Right, I need to find the runway heading, guys. Let me just quickly get this information up. Uh, we're coming in to runway... where is it? I know it was up there, but I'll just look down here. Runway 25, okay. Runway 250, let me, uh, Santa Barbara information up. So, runway 25, 250 is, uh, heading is 88. That can't be right. Hey, we, we got to turn in, man. Ninety. Right, yeah, we're, we're way off, man. We're way off. Let's 
turn to 80. Just to be sure. Actually, was... Man, we need to go down to the ground. I need to drop like a rock. We're too high. You're too high, Striker! You're too high! Whoa! Didn't mean to do you, mate. Where's the click spot, man, for this? There it is. Ah, oh, a thousand feet descent, that's... Do you know what I mean? We're gonna have to do some loop-de-loops or something, guys. Let's do a loop-de-loop. -loop. Actually, no, no, we'll, we'll be alright, we'll be alright, we'll be alright, we'll be fine. Right, two, five, zero. And the link, the speed at the moment for the link. Eh? Print screen. Hang on a second, mate. I can't see that. Mate, is this like porn we're about to look at here? Oh, right, your download speed, mate. <laughs> right, okay. Um, why have you sent me a picture of your download speed, mate? download speed and your upload speed is better than mine mate so whatever you're trying to do you'll do it <laughs> no worries on that mate <laughs> you're absolutely fine okay right we're way too high actually do you know what we are doing a, a, a turnaround here and we're killing the uh, descent oh, actually the descent's only going down to 3000 anyway so we're, we're going to have to do a 360 here guys I hope we're not going to run into a mountain here Here we go. Alright, 360. Um, hello. That should go down to 3000 only. Yeah. Right, let's uh, ask for a full stop landing now. Probably oh, best, isn't it? Am I streaming from a separate PC? Yes, I am. I have a two PC setup, and for flight simulation, it is totally necessary. For gaming, it's totally unnecessary. Yep. Runway seven. Runway seven. Man, it was runway twenty-five. Well, whatever. Oh, I was saying that though. Two five is the other way, isn't it? So it is runway seven. Sorry, that was my mistake. Well, hang on, my flight plan said, oh, well, whatever, they changed it. I'm totally fine. Right, let's turn around. Every time I fall apart. Runway 7. And we'll take it down to 2000. Dolphins in these waters. Runway seven, was it? Yo. Seven zero. Right, so six five should be enough. Here we go. Let me set my course up real quick here. Uh, runway 70. Why is the course not moving? Come on. Oh, dude, what are you doing? Oh, I can't set my course up. Oh, do you know what? Forget it. Runway's there. I can see it. Right. Autopilot off, you know what I mean? We're flying manually now. I got the plane. Flaps for stage. We're going down. Did we add permission to land, didn't we? Make straight in, did she say? You have to wait another eight days for your fiber connection, and then, mate, you're going to be sweet. That's us, mate. Yep. Yeah, Roger, Dodger. Coming in, mate. Coming in hot. Full max on the, thro on the 
Yeah, whatever. <laughs> right, guys, put your landing ratings in on Twitch. Uh, you know, you know the score. Exclamation mark. Uh, predict, and then what number you think I'm gonna make? Um, come on, guys, get it in. We're at two thousand feet. I think we're a bit high. Oh, look at the look at the look at the lighting, guys. Look how beautiful it looks. Right, let's. We need to drop. We need to descend a little bit here. Let's just uh, descend down. Wow, there's the terrain map I was looking for. Not the terrain maps you're looking for. Come on, Twitch guys, predict. I, I exclamation mark predict. Get your landing ratings in. Winner gets a chicken dinner. Coming in. Look how gorgeous this looks, guys. There's a fucker down there waiting for us. There's a dirty little fucker 50. Air Lingus as well. Waiting for us. Once us. My taxi light's on. No. Landing lights are. Yes. There we go, Brian's got it. 195! Man. Oh, look how gorgeous this looks, guys. <laughs> I mean, pro nobody's probably putting a prediction down because, you know, they got their hands full at the moment. Because this is so bloody gorgeous. This is what it's all about, guys, isn't it? Look at the mountains up the top. Bloody hell, man. Another stage of flaps. Oh, man. Mama. Is it me, or does that runway look like a platypus's beak? Just here. The, you see the eyes, and then the beak of the platypus? Fabian says minus 95. That's more like it, isn't it? I want to split the difference and say minus 100. Right, we're coming in. 300 minimums. 200 feet. Continue. Gotta do my own call outs, man. It looks like Chernobyl. <laughs> Why is that, mate? I mean, the lights are on here. Chernobyl, surely the lights aren't on. Eh? <laughs> Do you mean the, the, the glistening lights, is it? Is that what you mean, mate? Oh, we ain't got any more flaps. We've run out of flaps. It's flapped off. Right. Reverse. There we go. We're down. Reverse the engines. That'll just bring it. You don't have to use the brakes then. Let's, uh... Let's get GSX up. We're going to a gate. Yeah, mate. Well, I can't even see where to turn, mate. So... But we'll turn... Uh, we'll just turn off here. Hang on me. Bring my engine spell. Oh, there we go. There's this runoff point. Uh, who should we use here? Delta? Yeah, go on. Then. Hey, yo. Yo, where's your gun? Here he comes. Look at him, speed. He's there, mate. He's there already. Yep. Yep. See you later. Well, I'm not going to bother with that, actually. Because he's here. Look at him. He's a little star. Look at him. Here he is. Beep, 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 beep. Follow me. Come on, mate. We'll follow you. Little diamond geezer. Hey! Oh, MS is changing his rating now. Look at that. As soon as he see me touch down, he goes, I don't know, it's 174. <laughs> oh, we're, we were here. This is it, man. It was it the fuel station? Dude, watch out. You're going to drive into the fuel station, mate. Whoa, whoa, he's reversing. Come on. He sound like Chewy here. What's he doing now? Is that it, mate? Is that it? Right. Nobody was driving that, did you see? Ghost ghost vehicle? I guess this is it. Fuel box, man. That's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? Oh, hey, here he is again. <laughs> Dude, what are you doing? What's he doing? Hang on, let's stop. Is this it, mate? There's nobody driving that. Nobody driving. It's like remote control or something, isn't it? What's he doing, man? 
freaky little dude he is. Is that it? Like, is this... Is this it? Or should we... Uh, uh, am I supposed to follow him some more? I'm supposed to follow him again, aren't I? Why has he brought me here? Fucking little creepy dude this, isn't it? It's just because I missed a click. That's what they all say, mate. Why did he bring me to the get the that's so weird. I feel like it's like chase me, chase me. Did he want me fueling up or something? Hey. Or am I not supposed to be following him now? I don't know. I don't I ain't got a clue what's going on, man. It's too early in the morning for me. <laughs> and I've just woken up. Did you see the GSX update? Is there a... Oh, yeah! Yeah, well, I had a thingy uh, when I opened up the sim yesterday and it said, oh, big live update. And I'm like, oh, bloody hell, man. I was just about to go flying. <laughs> and I had to shut it down and, and update. And it basically, uh, it reinstalled everything, I think. It was weird. Yeah. Like, do you know what it was for? Anybody know? The car was driven by Mysterians. <laughs> Oh, going across the runway here. Is anybody? Of course, there's nobody landing. This is a bloody ghost town, this place. Oh, we're, going, we're turning left here. Where's me Fokker 50, mate? Put me by that, please. I don't fancy... Uh, make sure you put me by the Fokker 50, yeah? Can anybody see a Fokker 50? It's round here somewhere. Still supposed to be following him. Where's he taking us? Oh, hang on, wait, we're turning here. Okay, my ass, he's turning. Mate, you're gonna have to hurry up a little bit faster than that. V2 day. Is that what it says on his license plate? Is that an official license plate? I don't see my fucker. He's put me at a gate. Dude, you do realize I'm a caravan. Eh? Nobody's getting up to that ramp. Oh, dear. That'll do me. Uh, did you? Oh. Close enough, love. Close enough. Oh, actually, we can get a bit closer. Be careful not to buzzer, yeah? How close can we get this? Boom! Ah, oh, whatever. Right, parking brake, shut down. Let's cold and dark this baby up. Um, oh, that motor was... Yeah, switch the motor off. Switch everything off. Kill everything. Switched off, switched off. Battery off. Right, in fact, I'm, I'm even going to push cold and dark. Guys, there we go, guys. That's the last final journey of the Grand Caravan, guys. That's it. Guys, that... Oh, uh, what's all this stuff on the floor here? Somebody been cleaning the uh, jetways? Ugh. Somebody, somebody's been painting him or something. Guys, that's it. The final journey of the Grand Caravan, guys. That's... I know, it's going to be sad, isn't it, MS? Bye bye. Should we see what the landing rating was, guys? Who who won that bet? Yeah. Whoever gets closest gets to name the next plane we fly after the Fokker 50. Yeah. Here we go. Complete. So I said a hundred. Who said? Somebody else said uh, one nine five. Was it? We had one seven four from MS. We had 195 from Brian. Fabian said 95. And it was 152. So MS, you won, right? So what you get... What the, MS, what are you doing there, mate? Checklist. <laughs> 
MS, you get to decide the next plane that we fly after the Fokker 50, okay? The only thing it can't be is a jet plane, okay? But you choose, mate. I mean, that's it for the, um, the thingy now. It's, uh, it's Bye Bye Caravan, isn't it? Bye bye, baby, baby, bye. My, bye bye, baby. Will it crash? That's the, that's the question, isn't it? Will it crash? Boom! There she is. There's the Fokker 50. There's the one we've been looking for. Right, cold and dark, this. She's cold and dark. She's ready to go. Boom. The Fokker 50, guys. This is it. This is our plane now that we're going to use for the next few legs of the journey. Okay? So, I mean, guys, everybody can get on board this one. There's no more. Oh, I can only take eight people. Um, does the jetways work here? I don't know. Um, well, it don't matter which jetways. American Airlines. What's this here? Jet. Oh, level two. Well, I don't want level two, mate. Why does that come up for? You don't need level two to operate the jetways. What's that all about? Buy level two. I don't want to buy level two, mate. I haven't got it. I want to operate the jetway. Isn't that a so jetway? Control J then. Nope, that didn't even work. It's a so jetway, isn't it? Or is it like one of them greased in ones that don't move? That was a bit weird. What happened to me? Bloody job. Oh, we'll operate the stairs then, mate, instead. If the jetway failing. Bring the stairs in, mate. Right. Guys, we're going to have to uh, get on by. In fact, I don't even know how you open the doors on this thing. So, uh, she should be okay for fuel. She shouldn't. GSX isn't coming up anymore. Is it going to bite it? Ah! I pushed G, the G button twice, guys. I pushed the G button twice. That's why it bit it. Shut Active Sky down. Start the sim back up. Oh, man, we've got to be at that exact spot as well. What was the... Um... Oh, man. Can anybody remember where we parked? Where did they park me at? Oh, I don't know. That was a bit of a bummer, wasn't it? I pushed the G button to bring up the menu for GSX, but nothing happened, so I pushed it again. <laughs> Crashed the sim. Oh, it's 8 o'clock, man. Man, this, this is supposed to be a quick one. The Santa Barbara hop, basically, is what it is. It's very quick. So here it is, guys. We're going from Santa Barbara, where we just landed. And we're flying, we're zigzagging, and we're landing here. Literally, look at that. It's just... It's like less than 100 miles. This is going to be a quick one. We're going up to 9,000 feet. So, I mean, we got restrictions of 5,000, 6,000... 6,000. Oh, guys, we have to stay at 6,000. 5,000. Can't go up to 9,000. Bummer on that, innit? You got to go, Brian. All right, mate. No worries. Thank you for coming by, stopping by. Thanks for joining in. Um, I'll see you next time, mate. It's a choice for you is Boeing 707. <laughs> mate, MS, mate. I said no jets. No jets means no Airbus A310, no Boeing 707. It cannot be a jet plane. It has to be the prop bu -bu 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 plane, okay? Because I haven't passed my commercial license yet, mate. All right. Once I pass my commercial license, we can open up the jets, okay? But I've flown a jet for my virtual pilot license. Okay. You understand only jet plane. No, <laughs> no, it's not only jet plane, mate. It's only propeller plane. All right.
The Dash 400. Okay, yeah. Without hesitation. What's that, mate? Oh, without hesitation, sorry. Yeah, okay. Right, well, it'll be the Dash 400 then. All right. But do you mind if I bring in a co-pilot to the Dash 400? Okay? Like if we have a, a co-pilot, anybody, would, would anybody mind that? Oh, so looking forward to having it just go on from there. Right, it was about 5.30 in the morning, wasn't it? We'll say 6 o'clock. I don't think it was, but we'll say it was. So we were in Santa Barbara then. KSBA. There we go. And we, where were we parked? Well, there's not many choices actually, so it must be gate one. Because it definitely wasn't a fuel box. So we'll say gate one. We'll load up the flight plan. Very short flight plan. Where is it? KSBA to KSMO. There it is. Boom. We got to change that to six thousand though, and we'll say resave that because we can't go any higher than six thousand feet. It's just the way it's gotta be. Okay, so that's that. That's that. Load that in now. That's gonna take about ten minutes to load. That can go bye bye. <laughs> Oop! What the hell was that? What was that noise? Big bug, eh? When I launch P3D, I can't see the plane that I choose. Man, that's a, yeah. What, uh, do you have an AMD graphics card by any chance? Because people who have AMD graphics cards sometimes report that they can't see the preview window of the uh, of their plane. Like, that happened to me where it would be black, and that means your plane is not properly in your sim. Um, Right. That's now the active one. And we're going to click fly now in a moment. Great game, man. Hey, Massimo. Massimo, I see there on YouTube, mate. How's it going? Man, I haven't had any alerts come up, man. Is this thing working or what? Let me just double check to see if my alerts are working. Oh, Thank you. The best yep. Man. Yeah, they're Peter working. Hoogerty Peter is now Hoogerty aboard. Is now aboard. Yeah, they're working. Okay. PMDG. What does that mean, mate? Oh, your plane's PMDG. Sorry. Well, uh, which plane are you using? Because there's only the 747 in version 5, mate. So if it's anything else, that's probably the reason why you can't see it. Tell me it was the 747 El, ba El Bambino. Was it the 747, mate? You don't speak English. I speak Spanish. It was the 737. Well, there's your problem, mate. The 737 doesn't work in version 5. You've greased it in. That's why you're having problems. <laughs> it would be difficult for me to understand you. I mean, you write English fine, though. Oh, but then you can have a Google Translator. Um, Anglais only, mate. Sorry. Me no speako uh, Latino. But the problem is that PMDG work if you change reg... Yes, but... Uh, do you know what? Okay. Do you know we were talking about pirates during the flight and that you're only stealing from yourself if you pirate things? And I'm not talking to you now, El Bambino. I'm not saying you've pirated that at all, okay? But... Um, there was a guy, there's a YouTuber, right, who created a video to show you how to hack in PMDG aircraft into version 5 that have yet to be released into version 5 yet. So, um, actually, let me bring up uh, this a little bit more interesting to read. Um, so... Yeah, he basically did a video, and I used to be a follower of his channel, and I unsubscribed from his channel on YouTube because he really hung people out to dry. So um, he showed a lot of people how you can jimmy in 
the 737 NGXU, right? And um, and it's true. What he says in the video is absolutely true. That is the way you hack it in to the SIM. PMDG have stated, if anybody does this, there's no support for you from our end if you mess up. And you can mess up. And if you do mess up, you mess up big time because you're messing with your system files, okay? Um, but, you know, a lot of people have had great success. And there's a lot of famous YouTubers and streamers, you know, who have done it and show it in their videos every single day that they've done it, you know? Um, but I remember watching one of his live streams, which was like a Q&A, right? And one of the viewers said, oh, I'm having issues. Um, every time I load up my operation center, it just shuts down again and I can't get in. And it's only happened since I've put the NGXU into version five. And that very same YouTuber who showed you how to get the 737 into your sim went, you're on your own, mate. You have to sort that out on yourself. He, he, he would not help him fix it. He would not help him uh, how to fix his problem. Obviously, he can't go to PMDG now because they'll say, well, we're not helping you either. He now has a broken operation center, um, which he can't use for any of his PMDG aircraft now. And that's because the, the YouTuber won't help him either. And, and I think that's really bad. Like... I've I like I've I've put aircraft hang on a second let me let me cold and dark this thing there we go that looks the same guys doesn't it is that the same as it was before um I've put aircraft in version five from version four right I've I've even I don't think I've shown anybody how to do it in a video I don't think I've ever done that but I would like on certain aircraft certain aircraft only like the Q-400, everybody has got that in from version 4 because it's not been updated yet for version 5. Um, all my Karen Auto planes, I actually haven't updated to version 5 because I haven't needed to. They work absolutely fine from version 4. Um, so I, that, I, I've not updated them. I haven't updated some of my Aerosoft stuff because the version 4 stuff works in version 5 without needing to update it. Um, I have updated some stuff though that even though it did work um, and it's from Aerosoft again, I still updated it to version 5. Um, but PMDG is one thing I would not mess with. They are very intricate, highly detailed uh, system aircraft and they use the operation center to manage the, the plane in your sim and they're installed directly into your file system of your sim. And I would not mess. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, the 737 cost me 130 quid to buy. And I wouldn't want to do something that jeopardized me not being able to use it. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I won't be able to use it because PMDG have discontinued it. And I have to buy the NGXU if I'm to fly the 737 in my sim, which I'm not going to do. I'm just going to move on to Airbus instead. Um, but I, I wouldn't want to put that at risk anyway. You know, so and I certainly wouldn't hang people out to dry who I've recommended to do it and, and then not help them when it goes wrong. That's just totally bad. Clive here. I'm reporting this to the flight sim police. <laughs> Akel. Mate, I thought I, I thought Danny was you got too many profiles. <laughs> you got too many profiles, mate. Uh, so truly what plane can fly on P3D version 5? El, El Bambino, you got loads. Loads can fly. You know, you got your Aerosoft ones. They've been updated for version 5. You know, you've got the 747 from PMDG. That can fly in version 5. You've got loads of prop planes like this Carinado we're about to do now, which I better get in and start doing it, to be honest. Um, I'm not going to bother with GSX this time. Bloody nukes me. Right. I've got a checklist, guys, for this, because uh, I can't actually remember how you start this bad boy up. Actually, I think I might be all right. We'll try it without it. Um, let's uh, whack on the batteries. Um, I think, no. The standby, we need the standby power, man. Where was that? I had that external power. Love some external power. There we go. On. 
around them one. Right. Actually, I do need the checklist. <laughs> right. Do not understand, but very good. You're live. Are you a pilot in real life? Uh, I'm not a working pilot, but I have flown a plane. Uh, is it okay for the... Yeah, MS, mate. Don't worry. We'll do the... um. In, like, when we get down to South America, we'll have the Dash 400 waiting for us, mate. Okay. Right, let's let's get this puppy started very quickly. Uh, hydraulics, pins on board, pedals, seats, g harnesses, gimp masks, they're all there. Okay. Start the pushback, it says, mate. We have to start the electrics first. Can't start pushback without putting the electrics on. Right, that's armed. Uh, let's put these on. Is that on? That's on. That's set to the on. Actually, set it to auto. Um. Right. I'm gonna. Actually, I need to stick fly now. I need to remember to, um. Check up some navigational data because we have to use our VORs for this puppy. It ain't got GPS on air at all. So we got to do this by the book. This flight's got to go all right. Right. We got no power. We got no. We, we need to start the puppy on this. All right. Hang on. Let me, I'm going to have to ignore the chat for a second, guys. Right. Check pump. Lights are out. Battery starts. Pump on two. So two, two. Uh, don't need the cross feed yet. Avionics. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, that's fine. That's good. Right. Oh, they don't come on anyway. Right. Power levers. Make sure that they're set. Which they should be. Power levers are set. That's to, set to that. We're going to lose our power in a minute if I don't get this set up. We're on external power, though, at the moment. So but we need to start the engines, uh, which means we should be able to tune in. Let's listen to the weather. There we go. Right, engine selector. We will need pushback, actually. Man, is that it for the setup? That's pretty fast, that is. Right, let's start the... Uh, we need to start one of the engines here. Let's get our clearance first. Last time we used an ATC, guys. Very last time, now. Has there been a hotfix 2 for version 5? I haven't bothered with it. Still many crashes on a 4 gigabyte GPU. Mate, I'm not even surprised you've got crashes on a 4 gigabyte. Get rid of that 4 gigabyte GPU, mate. You definitely need a minimum of 8 for for version 5. Uh, what were we squawking? Sorry. Right, okay. Runway, uh, what was our runway? Right, get rid of that one. We don't need that. We are taking off from runway 25, hopefully. Right, contact ground. We need clearance to uh, taxi so we can start these bad boys up. Uh, get rid of that. Runway 25, uh, that's the course. Let's set this runway. Twenty-five. Twenty-five to life. Right, that's that set up. That's that set up. Do you know what? My, uh, this here, I don't know how you get this working because uh, it just always says loading database. I can't get this set, this working. I mean, I'll, I'm going to have to update this aircraft in order to update this unit. But to be honest, I don't need to fly using that. I can, I can fly without it. It's fine. Do you know what? Let's have some lights in this puppy here. There we go. 
That's a bit better. Uh, request the taxi, man. Ground, let's get the old G request uh, pushback going. Departure clearance requested, yep. I'll tell you, when we use American Airlines, they crashed us last time. Oh, it's just gone. Where's it gone? Oh, it's here. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, whatever you said, mate. Okay, runway 7 now it is. Oh, so it's not runway 25. Hey, Captain! Oh, you're not a captain. I'm a captain. Yeah, we're ready for pushback. Thank you very much. 7 0. Seven zero. Locking gear. Okay. You you lock that gear, mate. I'm putting the flaps out. I, think it, I don't feel like we've finished setting this bad boy up here. Taxi lights on. Uh, yeah, just pushes. Um, I don't know, man. Maybe straight out. Just pushes out. Yeah, just do just just do it straight out, mate. Manual stop. Okay. Parking brakes are released. Start at will, mate. We will. We will definitely will. Cause we need, we're still attached to the ex exterior uh, unit, actually. Um, so we definitely need to start one of these bad boys up. Right. Let's. How do you start these up again? I forget. Um, engine selector, left or right, and hold. Right. So engine start. Uh, number two. Is it starting? There we go, she's purring. Right, that can now go on the, uh, bus vault, I think it is. No. Well, it must be that one, because... That gives me the most juice, I'd say. I'd say that one. Okay. Right, so she's purring. Do we have to stop ourselves? Yeah, stop here, mate. I'll do. Whoa! What are you doing, mate? I said stop here. What? What's going on, man? Uh, well, yeah, man. What's he doing? What's well, what the hell's all that about, dude? You just spun me out of control. What's all that about, guys? I'm gonna be speaking a tower on you guys. All right, let's start the left engine. Right, uh, passing twenty percent fuel lever start. Um, fuel lever uh, should be open, which it is. Push back. Yep, that's been started. Switch off the engine. That can happen. And the ignitions. Right. Double check our uh, fuel get. Whoa! What's going on, mate? Oh, I mean, seriously! I can't stop this thing. What the hell? Oh, guys, we got to take off, man. What is going on? Dudes are following the checklist here. <laughs> the fuck? Dude, honestly, what is going on? I hadn't finished my checklist. And it's just blasted me. Mother, right. Gear up. Fucking hell. Right. Well, I, I, honestly, we are, we are, we are, I'm sorry, to, I don't know what to say, mate. I don't know what to say. Go to the tower. <laughs> don't worry about it, we don't need you. Unbelievable, that. Unbelievable. Right, we need to... I, I'm not even set up for takeoff on this puppy. Seriously, I mean, taxi lights off. Bloody hell, man. This thing is not even set up. 
for takeoff. We're not set up for flight. What the hell happened, man? Tune to approach now. Do you know what? Just request flight following, please. Right, I need. I, I, I haven't got my courses yet. I haven't got my thingies yet. Right, so the first one is this one, which is 11490. Right, acknowledge that and do one. 11490. We need to know, right, which way we're going. Wait for this to kick in, and then we can set our course. I mean, we need to climb up to fight. What's. What the hell? What the hell? Guys, I. What was that all about? So not only did that nuke me, the sim nuked me as well. Man, that is a total rip, isn't it? Like seriously, like I mean, to be honest, it shouldn't have took off in that fashion to be start to start with. Like, I gotta investigate why suddenly I think it's GSX to be honest. Because it had a spinning. And you know what? I'm not getting GSX involved. We're going to start on the runway. I'm not getting GSX involved. Actually, no, we won't start on the runway because we need to ATC ourselves. But I have a feeling that that's X because took stop stop the pushback and it spun me around. And then, you know, it started jetting my plane forward. Man, I don't know what the hell happened then. Pens just go. All this shit's just delaying me, man. Right. Checklist is a burn. Sorry, a eh, a eh, Clive, what were you saying there, mate? Has there been a hot fix for version Oh yeah, you've already yeah, you said that. With uh, your thirty four thousand air miles, <laughs> I've been looking at your streams for about two or three days. <laughs> Yeah, I will do something with those points, don't you worry. And you guys will be the richest of the rich when we do. So just sit tight with them, guys. Don't even worry. I didn't even have Active Sky running. There was no Active Sky running in that little situation there. I'm going to keep Project Fly connected. That's That, that surely has got to meet that Sim Beast best thing. You want your emotes, MS. Don't you worry, man. They're coming. They're coming. This time next month, you will have emotes. I'm in the process of collecting them. You know? I mean, it would be easy just to go out and buy, like, a package that you install into OBS, and then everybody gets everything. But I, I want to personalize them a little bit, so I'm collecting my emotes up. And I've got, I've got to learn how to, you know, sort that out with Twitch, to be honest. I haven't learned yet. Oh, man. What's Mike doing? Let's check out Beam while we wait. I don't believe that. I don't believe it. Come on, Mike. What are you doing, mate? Here he is. Pro ATC for new users. Oh, it's it's here. Man, we gotta do this flight. I gotta do this flight. Do you know what I mean? I could so easily just quit now and then go, that's it guys. We're leaving it for tonight and then we'll pick it up next week, but I wanted this flight in the bag. B A. B S. Right, so oh, we have to start at the gate. We might as well. I'm not going to be doing um, GSX. I need to investigate. I mean, I didn't do GSX before, and we were fine. And I'm wondering if that's why. We'll leave that time. That's fine. Flight plan. Massive update in there. Which burns your sim. 6,000 feet, that's fine. Yes. Okie dokie. Alright, let's see what Mike's saying. Hopefully it won't get copyrighted for streaming a live stream. 
It's Clive. Hey, hang on a second. He's. I. Uh, mm, is he still chatting here? Say, so, yeah, let's say hello to him. Hello, Mike. Oh. Capitals. Yeah, you might have to flap your arms as well. Is he watching us or something? <laughs> Uh, second nature of pilots will always follow checklists and procedures. So don't make mistakes can't be made. Yeah, even when you do, mate, it still gets burned. Would you provide a list of voices you have? Actually, you know what? Has he been chatting all the way through? Because that would mean Acal is is not Clive unless he's got two on the go. Let's troll the troll, man. Yeah, I'll be on and off. I will be on and off because I'm trolling Adam as well. Yeah. Quite a long taxi at this airport if you get this. Uh, I have large ears, so it all helps. Yeah, I bet you do. Runway you listen, you're watching me as well, yeah. 4 and 22, I think. Acal, mate, I'm not Clive. <laughs> see, what, see what I mean? If this gets too fast, it gets out of control. You've got to keep that speed down. On this NGX, 15's okay. Maybe a bit less. Mm. Well, I've said hello to him and he hasn't said anything I back. I kick myself for not recognising that runway. Never mind. You know what I mean? It's gone now, it's well gone. Yes, Jason. I think he's answering all the questions in the chat. Uh, Jason, yes, it is compatible. I've used it with version 5, and it works just the same. In fact, I noticed it worked actually worked better. I didn't get... It, sometimes you get a hesitation when you switch frequencies at the very start, when you start off. And I noticed that uh, in, the, in the NGX, in version 5, no problems at all. Just switched manually, and it was straight away. I got the uh, got the. Uh, this guy knows everything about ATC, Pro ATC. No he knows everything, so I follow his channel quite uh, I closely use, um, as I'm learning about it. UT Live, Ultimate Traffic Live, Santa Barbara. Stream within a stream, this isn't it. So, anyone got any more questions regarding um, Pro ATC? Who's this guy? He sounds like that depressed computer in Red Dwarf. He does actually, doesn't he? He does. Oh. Hi, Adam. Sorry, I missed you there, mate. Hello. There we go. He see me. Yeah, he does sound like him, doesn't he? Right. Um, do I need? I just love the ambience with that ATC in the background. It's oh, just makes know. it so much better. And once you start, you know, if you you get more, I mean, I've got there's loads of voices. Don't forget on the uh, in the files section on the uh, Facebook. What page. was his name? Uh, that computer. Because you had Holly, I've, and then I've you got had Nor Norway, the China, other one. I think. Uh, there's quite a few now that we've got. Can't remember his and name. And they're really easy to uh, to install. Mm -hmm. The Red Dwarf. And if anyone computer, needs to know Holly. how to do that, in the earlier ask me seasons, and I'll, um, was that guy. I've actually got and a video. Sounds like think, Mike. That, Mike that sounds like Mike. Like shows you how to do it. But I can't remember his name. Uh, Norman. Nah, I don't think it was. That didn't sound yeah, familiar. Jace. No, I've, I've, uh, I've got um, five, but um, I'm not using remember. it at the moment until they've sorted it out a little bit better. I know Adam will disagree with me. He's got he's running like a dream. <laughs> I was it still, I was still called Holly. Yeah. Ah, uh, the actor was called Norman. Let's make and a laugh of that. Guys, let me know what you think of the scenery once we get air bombs. Let's get it on here. Okay. Okay.
I say version five is ace. And let's see what those trees in case you're interested courtesy of Terra Flora. Okay, I'm gonna uh we'll see really. get me head down now for uh, the runway, so um I'll be back in a sec. Got Ryanair. I will have to call takeoff checkers, please. Oh, flaps. Could I hear flaps that? Five. How cool is that? Stabilizer trim, six point zero units. Before takeoff checklist complete. It sounds so much more natural than it. Anyway, we'll have to leave him now because we we're back in. So yeah, go check it out though. Like, don't check it out now though because you're watching me. <laughs> no, check it out if you want. Right, cold and dark again. Actually, do you know what? We had this thing started, so let's put ready for taxi. Actually, so she's ready for taxi. We're gonna have, we're just gonna push back as normal, okay? Use the normal push back, I think. Right. Wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This thing's really humming. What's going on? Wait for it to calm down a little bit here. Right, get rid of that. Right, uh, ground clearance. We'll go through all this. Santa Monica. You can't have clearance because you've started your engines. Right. 6,000 feet, right. Okay. Straight away, dude. Straight away is where I'm climbing. 6,000. Yep, thank you very much for that. Let's go over the mouse. And that's a bit laggy, that. The engines are spooling again. A bit crazy, man. Lights. Uh, ground control to major. Tell me we have some taxi clearance, please. We need to get in the air. What was our first uh, point of contact here? This one. 11490. Roger clearance, Clarence. 11490. Right. Boom. Put that in, 11490. That's sorting itself out. We'll, well, we can do that now, I suppose. Where are you going, man? Whoa. Right, what, what runway? Runway seven. So we need uh, runway seven, seven zero on that. That's that. That's that. So we're going that way. Right. Let's do a push back, and then we'll get GSX to uh, sort us out. What is it? Uh, push back, man. I forgot the buttons. Uh, push back, is that it? No. No. Man, I've I don't know. Control P in it. No. Oh, man. I don't know. How are we going to get push back going? I thought I had one of these buttons assigned to it, but it clearly ain't. Right, let me just... I don't want to use GSX for the pushback because it, it. I think that's what crashed it last time. So... Um, pushback. Isn't it R for request pushback? Or is it just push back? A yeah, request. No. But it's not. Oh, there it is. Push back. Right. Let's quickly assign a button to it. 
Hello? Can't have one of them buns. What's going on? What's happened? I can't assign... Man, that's a bit problematic, isn't it? Why can't I use one of these buttons? Press the key, a button, a joystick. Well, I am, mate, but you're not doing anything. Right. Uh, can't use any of them. It doesn't accept any of my joystick. My That's so weird. What the hell? What have I got free on my keypad? Have I got N? Is N taken for anything? I don't know what N... No, N is fine, so we'll use N for that. P, push back. Push. Where's it gone now? <laughs> push back. N. Okay, there we go. Right, push back, please. Push back, please. Right, we can't even have push back with. Oh, oh, there we go. Now we're going. Right. It's so weird, man. Right. Um, before takeoff, after engine start. That's where we're up to. Flaps. Did I set them already? There we go. Right, um, that's in takeoff mode, that's cool. I think that might be enough, really. That might be, yeah, we can, we can turn around from here, so that will do for the pushback, thank you very much. Stop that, hit the brakes, right. So we're going to taxi seven. So can we use GSX to get us there, or are they going to kill us? Don't destroy me. There we go. Follow me, car is going to do a dance now in front of us. Now it looks like it's been raining on the floor, doesn't it? Hey, Damien, how's it going, mate? I'll see you there. I had a shift P, mate. I couldn't. It wasn't working. I've disabled the shift P. That's what it was. I, but I, I don't know why none of my buttons on my. Uh, controller aren't working. That's a bit weird. Right. Uh, flight instruments are checked. Let's do a quick... Uh, yep. They're working. Good to go. Flaps are set. Prop over speed. Uh, I don't know. Um, I have, do you know what? I kind of... I, I knew how to flew this, but it's been such a while. I just don't know. Um, that's why I need a checklist. 26 seconds for the follow me car. Right. Flight controls, they're done. Uh, config, which is in takeoff mode, check. Right, and then it's just gear and flaps and all that good stuff. Oh, shit. I've just hit my levers here. They're going nuts now. There we go, calm down. Right, 6,000 feet. That's that set. Um, we can dial in our next waypoint after this one, which is this one, 11250. So let's dial that in now. One, two, ready. That's ready to take over. We got uh, six miles to go to our waypoint. Where is this car, man? Follow me, car go. Guys, I don't see a follow me vehicle. Oh, there he is. There he is. Right, okay, let's let's follow him then. Here we go, boys. Hey, Boots, how's it going, mates? Welcome. Guy, mate, you just missed, I'll tell you. The, the sim went mental, right? I asked GSX for a pushback, right? And they started pushing me back, right? Everything was going fine, right? Um, I stop the pushback before they do, and suddenly the the, the three six steering me, you know, ran in circles, right? And um, 
And then I'm like, well, what happened then? So I pushed the brakes, we stop. I, th I hadn't finished configuring the aircraft for takeoff. So I continue to do that. And the next thing I know, the plane starts going forward really fast. And I'm like, dude, I haven't set anything up here. What's going on? And I had to take off. I had to suddenly get into the air. And then the sim crashed. I'm like, well, what was that all about? Like, so I just had to quickly restart the sim and everything, man. I don't know. Random that was. I don't think it was the sim itself. I think GSX, because it's had a massive update. Doing something it shouldn't. But I need to tune in the tower, ask about permission to get out of the runway. This is the runway here, isn't it? I think. So we're all set up, I think. Uh, engine's been purring. I had to look, I had to fast track this because uh, we got to get to Santa Monica. That's where we're going. Santa Monica. This is the plane we're going to be using for the next few days or, well, next couple of weeks at least. This will take us down to South America, guys. And there's a lot more people that can go on board to this than, uh, oh, he's going, he is, than the old caravan. We, we've retired the caravan now. Right. Is this back up and running? Like, yeah. That's got me. Trees are wonderful. Yeah, they're all right. Look a bit frosty, don't they? Not even uh, summertime, I suppose. Actually, that looks a bit frosty as well, man. I haven't put the uh, heating on. Uh, we're, 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 we're frosting up here. Look, can you see the frost accumulating on the window screen here? We're frosting up. I haven't put on the uh, thingies yet. So that one. Put the window heat on. There we go. That should go now, I think. I think that was the window heat anyway. Yeah, window heat, yeah. Put it on high. It was on low. Right. This this baby's got some engine power, you know what I mean? Sorry need. What does that mean, mate? Give it to me. Clear for takeoff, babies. Right, clear to also finish setting this plane up, really. Oh man, I haven't turned on Active Sky yet, hang on. That's not running. We'll wait till that loads. That's gonna change the way it looks like. Weather's gonna change, guys. Incoming change. Let me get that off the screen. Uh, actually, I better load the flight plan into it as well. Just zipped across. Look at him go. 
Did you see that? Mad. Right, let's finish setting this plane up. Um, ignition's on. They're all on. Uh, fuel pumps on. I guess. I don't know. so we can literally turn to our destination which is six miles away to the next uh, to the next heading change right guys let's uh, rub these puppies going we're going here we go rock and roll leave uh, to leave because lockdown is ending for you oh no way you're not back on track back to school oh mate sorry to hear that don't worry, mate. You'll still be able to see them all. You'll still be able to see all the good stuff. Here we go. Uh, engine car, uh, 120 miles an hour uh, takeoff. Something like that, it? Boom, we're in the air, guys. Right. Yeah. Engine, uh, sorry, engine. Le legs up, you know what I mean. Wheels up. Flaps. Not yet. Man, we are we are bombing it up, man. Look at this. In it, that's what you guys see in it, right there. Right. Uh, let's put on the autopilot now. Whoa, my course is now just done. A change. I need to find out which way I'm going first. That's the... Oh, dude, which way are you going? What the hell? Which way is it, man? That's the... No, that's the away. I need the other way. Two figure. There we go. That's the two figure. Come on. Do you know what? I'm saying it's that way. That I originally had it pointing. It seems... Oh, no, there we go. Right, autopilot on. Uh, that one. Heading. Uh, vertical speed. Get out of the way. 2700, let's take that down to uh, 1800, mate. Should I say down to 1500? Right, we can only go up to 6,000 feet. And we're at 4,800. Okay, I think we're all safe. And right, let's sort the uh, course out here. Which way are we going? There it is. There we go. Oh, it's slipping again. That's the one. Um, okay, we're three miles away. To be honest, we're going to tune into the next one, I think. I think we can. Let's tune into the next, uh, what you call it. Because I think we're, we're passing it. Look how bad that looks. That looks terrible. Right. Like it's this way. That way. There we go. And we're 43 miles away from the next station, which now that we've tuned that one in, we can tune the next one in, which is this one. Uh, 11310. 113 one zero there we go that's that ready 
So we've got a few miles to get before we have to worry about that. There we go. We're all set, guys. We can just enjoy the uh, view now, isn't it? Oh, look at them mountains. Oh, my God. Guy, hang on. We're 8,000 feet here. What's going on, man? Now we got to go descend. Um, oh, the uh, cruise. So that's a cruise. Oh, that's climb, that is. There we go. Um, take us down to... Uh, Go down to six thousand, mate. Can't believe that. That's a bit cheeky, wasn't it? Now is that going to go down? No, it's not. So we need to descend ourselves. Right, six thousand feet. Can't believe that one. Hang on a second. Six thousand feet, mate. We're going to run into mountains here. Oh, the minimum is 6,000, actually. Do you know what? Let's keep it at 8. I think, uh, yeah, the minimum was 6, sorry. Not the... Uh, re oh, no, it's restrictions. So it's... Isn't it nothing below? Yeah, so you got to stay above. So, yeah, we need to... 8,000 is fine, then. That will we'll stay 8,000, right? Altitude, that then. Let's hit it, boys. Take me up to 8,000. There we go. Right. Uh, let's do a clean up here. Turn that off. Flaps up. I should have come up a long time ago. Uh, what else we got after takeoff checklist? Man. Can't see here. Gear and flaps up, altimeter set. Yep. Oh, I think uh, they wanted to. Oh. Oh, don't even do this to me, please. I've just opened the ATC window up. That's all it was. Just opened the ATC window up, guys. And I got nuked. ATC window. Guys, can't set this up again, I'm afraid. It's cancelled. We'll have to do this flight another time. Honestly, can you believe that, man? Do you know what? We're going to do this flight tomorrow, okay? Because we're going to continue the um, world tour tomorrow. So tomorrow at 9 a.m., we will continue this, okay? Um, man, I need to go back to watching Mike. <laughs> you guys want to watch Mike with me? <laughs> I need to watch Mike. Can't believe that, man. That is just a total burn. That was places, but once you've flown a route a few times, it's surprising how quick you get to know that and know what altitude you should be at, etc., etc. So if, if the if the ATC's got you a bit high, you can ask for a, uh, altitude reduction, and normally they give it to you with no problem, unless there's a restriction. At that point, um, normally you'll get the reduction in altitude with no problems. But uh, Pro ATC does use the the flight the um, charts pretty strictly, Blame Adam. and he they do follow. The steward. And you can check, you can cross check with the charts, and uh, yeah, they're pretty good. Right, guys, I have to say goodbye, good night for tonight. Um, but tomorrow we will uh, well, be. Well, the reason I've only got that, Hayden, is on. because I've just reinstalled. Um, 
I'll go back to Red Dwarf in a second. Um, I'm going to say good night tonight for now, but tomorrow morning, you know, we'll pick it up literally in 12 hours' time, guys. In 12 hours, I'll be back online. We'll do that exact same flight. Um, ATC window, man. We're going to use ATC in that flight, but then after that, it'll either be VATSIM or it'll be Pro ATC, okay? It'll be one or the other. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I say thank you and good night. Escape. They say it's your own child.